Good morning, blessed morning uh, to everyone. The uh, public hearing on the Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources uh, Development uh, joined with the Committee on Foreign Relations is now called to order. Uh, we'd like to first of all recognize our distinguished uh, colleagues uh, present here today, Senator uh, Nancy Binay, our uh, Vice Chair, and uh, Senator Atol uh, Tolentino is also a member of this uh, uh, committee, Vice Chair of uh, Foreign Relations uh, Committee. We also like to uh, recognize our resource persons, um, our uh, favorite secretary of Dole, <laughs> the best secretary of Dole, uh, and always present uh, in this uh, uh, committee hearing, committee hearings here in the Senate, Secretary uh, Silvestre Bello III. Um, from DFA, Yusek Sara Lu Ariola. Um, from POEA, Administrator uh, Bernard uh, Olalia. Sir, morning. From uh, OWA, Administrator Hans uh, Leo Kakdak. From uh, NBI, Chief uh, Medical Legal, Dr. Ricardo. Sorry, Rodaje. Rodaje. Hi, sir. Thank you for being here. Uh, the chairperson and, and national president of ACO OFW Incorporated, Dr. Chi Umandap. Um, president, Five Star Recruitment Corporation, Mr. Reynaldo Madamba. Sir. Deputy Administrator, Office of Civil Defense, ASEC uh, Christopher Purisima. National Security Council, uh, Deputy Director General Vicente Agdamag. From NEDA, Yusek Rosemary Edilion. Ma'am, thank you for being here. From uh, Social Welfare uh, uh, Officer, our Social Welfare Officer uh, present here today, Mr. Bernard uh, Bonina. Our uh, Suki also, may kababayan, chairperson of uh, Blas Ople Policy Center and Training Institution, Ms. Susan Ople. Morning, ma'am. Chairperson of uh, PASE, uh, Ms. Uh, Edwina Beach, President, Coalition of Licensed Agencies for Domestic and Service uh, Workers Incorporated or CLADS, Ms. Lucita Sermonia, Sermonia. and uh, the Vice Chair of uh, Migrante International, Mr. Arman Hernando. Gandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. The Chair, uh, having introduced the PS Resolution 286 called this uh, committee hearing to look into the issues on the uh, deaths of uh, overseas Filipino workers in Kuwait, this time involving um, Jeneline Villavende and Constantia Dayag, who both died of questionable circumstances on December and May of uh, 2019, respectively, and the government's migration policies in promoting the welfare and rights of our migrant workers. Together with the PS Resolution 296 introduced by Senator Marcos, which was also referred just yesterday in this uh, committee, We'd also uh, hear out the uh, repatriation and the contingency plan of government in ensuring the safety, welfare, protection, and interests of our Filipino workers in the light of the escalating security tensions in the Middle East. May I be allowed to uh, give uh, my, my opening statement? Alam nyo po, nakakalungkot every time we talk about our... Uh, Kababayans, simulan natin kay Joanna De Mafelis, Inabuso at Pinaslang, sa Kuwait noong February 2018. Si Constancia Dayag, Inabuso at Pinaslang, sa Kuwait, May 2019. Si Jeneline Villavende, Inabuso at Pinaslang, sa Kuwait, noong December 2019. Paulit-ulit po yung salitang pangaabuso at pagpaslang. Ang tanging nagbabago lamang ay yung pangalan ng Inabuso at Pinaslang. Filipinos being enslaved, murdered, abused, and treated like animals in the Middle East, partic particularly in Kuwait, has become a vicious cycle. Ang tanong po natin lahat, ganito na lang ba talaga tayong mga Pilipino? Handang paalipin sa iba, kahit patayin, gahasain, at tratuhing masahol pa sa hayop ang ating mga kababayan. Bakit nga po ba hindi tayo makapagpatupad ng isang kasunduan uh, sa ibang bansa sa Middle East o makapagpatupad ng employment ban, lalo na sa domestic uh, workers, 
service uh, workers sa bansang may kafala system na kung saan uh, for few years now we have been uh, hearing and talking about uh, the evils of kafala system. Kung gagawin po yan, baka naman seryosohin kasi nila tayo. Kaya ho, supportado ko yung uh, total deployment ban. But we wanted to talk about it later and further kung ano nga ba itong uh, uh, deployment ban na ito. Kung gagawin po siguro natin ang mga ito, maaaring magbago ang ihip ng hangin. Eh hindi po ba halos mga household workers na Filipino ang naglagay ng kaayusan sa mga tahanan sa Arabia sa loob ng panahong dekadekada na? Hindi po ba mga Pilipinong yaya ang nag-aruga sa henerasyon ng mga Arabo ngayon? Hindi po ba mga engineers at mga construction workers na Pinoy ang nagtayo ng mga infrastruktura, gusali at bahay nila sa Arabia? Hindi po ba mga doktor, nurses at caregivers na Pinoy ang umaalalay sa mga may sakit at matatandang Arabo simula pa noong una? Ang pangaabuso at pagpaslang sa ating mga kababayan ay hindi katanggap-tanggap. Sampal po ito sa atin, lalo na pagsasabihin, babayaran na lang ng blood money. Alam po natin na kanselado na ang permit ng Our Lady of Mount Carmel Global E. Human Resources Incorporated na nagpaalis kay Joanna De Mafelis. Suspendido na rin po ang five-star recruitment and manpower agency na nagpalipad naman kay Jenaline Villavende. Pero kung alerto po at sensitibo at may malasakit ang mga ito at ang lahat ng ating ahensya ng pamahalaan sa pangangailangan ng ating mga distress OFWs, tsak po siguro na maiiwasan o maaaring hindi humantong sa kamatayan ang sinapit ng ating mga kababayan. This issue hits us at the very close, at the very core of our humanity and dignity, not only as individual Filipinos, but as a sovereign nation and as a people. Ang tensyong nagaganap ngayon po sa Middle East, lalo na po sa Iraq, Iran, etc., ay isa pang usapin. May pagkakataon at panahon po tayo para mailigtas ang ating mga kababayan doon. Pero ano nga po ba talaga ang pinapatupad natin at gusto nating maliwanagan po yan? Voluntary repatriation, mandatory repatriation, at sinasabi forced repatriation, at ano nga po ba yung kahulugan nito? At we wanted to be of help and we wanted to exercise our oversight function sa paano makakatulong ang ating Senado. Bakit po kaya mas gusto rin ng ating mga kababayan na manatili na lang doon kahit na ganyan ang sitwasyon? Naintindihan po natin kung gaano ka-importante ang trabaho para sa ating mga OFWs. Pero handa po ba talaga nating isugal ang ating mga dangal, ang buhay sa ngalan ng Sigmura? Dagdag pa ang usapin hinggil sa mga OFWs who are also working in areas affected by the novel coronavirus, particularly in Wuhan, China. And perhaps we can uh, also get um, uh, an update regarding this. Kamusta po kaya ang ating mga kababayan doon? Pag-usapan po natin ito, pagtulungan po tayo para hanapin ang uh, mga solusyon sa problema at suliraning kinakaharap natin ngayon bilang isang bayan. Uh, liwanagan at gabayan at pagpalain po sana tayo ng ating Panginoong Diyos sa gawain natin ngayong umagang ito. Muli, maraming salamat po uh, for being here. At this juncture, I'd ask my uh, colleagues if you... Sen Nancy, Sen uh, Tolentino, uh, uh, you're recognized, sir. Indulgence of the chair, this has been a recurring problem, but uh, I, I support your initiative. I'd just like to manifest for the record that the, the current bill pending, I think it's now in the plenary, relative to the legal assistance fund, uh, should, should likewise be revisited even though we're still in the period of the amendments because uh, from what I've heard, the, the, as the legal assistance funds would be utilized just for uh, those being, th those cases uh, being prosecuted as against our OFWs, but there is no provision for our OFWs to utilize said funds as plaintiffs. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the legal assistance funds would be utilized with our OFWs as defendants. So, so I, 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 would, I would surmise, Mr. Mr. Chair, that in cases wherein our OFW kababayans are the ones affected, they'd be allowed to utilize said funds as 
plaintiffs. Para naman sila naman yung makapagabla, hindi yung sila yung hinahabla. So siguro ganito rin sa mga recurring problems na ito, na yung mga inabuso ng kababayan natin, eh wala talaga silang pondo pang gamit uh, para habulin. Na, na offense kay Mr. Madamba, uh, habulin yung mga dapat ma ma mahabla, not just within our jurisdiction, but even uh, in the Middle East, uh, 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 Mr. Chair. So yun lang po, and I, I think uh, you will have a very substantive discussion with all the personalities here. Uh, makikinig lang po ako. Well, thank you so much, uh, Senator Tolentino. It's a good thing that you made mention about this uh, particular measure pending in the plenary for uh, interpolations and debate. But uh, we'd like to point out that the, the, the biggest challenge that uh, uh, we are facing uh, currently is the fact that uh, we cannot even access the uh, legal assistance fund kung nagsisimula pa lang or nagbibuild pa lang ng kaso. Is, is that uh, uh, correct? So that is what we wanted to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to do. Kaya uh, hopefully within uh, the next couple of uh, weeks, matakel na natin itong uh, uh, panukalang batas na ito at maging ganap na batas ito sa, su sa suporta at tulong ng ating mga colleagues na narito. Siguro at this juncture, let's uh, give the floor. Uh, we'll, we'll ask uh, Dole first and then uh, DFA and... Uh, Okay, uh, Senator, <laughs> Senator Nancy, you have the yeah, floor. With the permission of the chair, totally not related to OFW, but I would like to take the opportunity then and here si Secretary Bello. I just want to give an update on Taal. Do we have an existing program similar to Marawi, where we can cash for work for those who are affected by the eruption of the Taal volcano? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we also have a program extended to the nine municipalities directly affected by the Taal volcano eruption, Your Honors. We have allocated uh, 73 million pesos, Your Honor, to answer for the salaries of the, we call them interns, Your Honor, who will be helping in the cleaning up and rehabilitation of the nine municipalities, Your Honor. At the moment, how many are going to be able to do this program? I'm sure si Senator Tolentino is very much interested because it's also affected by the place. Your Honor, we gave uh, each municipality six, uh, almost 700 uh, interns. We call them interns, Your Honor. But since they could not immediately work there because of the lockdown, we assigned most of them to the evacuation centers, Your Honor. And I gave direction to our uh, in charge, Your Honor, that the focus of our interns should be in the cleaning of the toilets. Dahil nung pumunta po ako doon, napansin ko po na napakarumi yung mga, anong tawag, sa mga banyo po. Kaya sabi ko, focus on the cleaning of the toilets, comfort rooms, and also at the same time serve in the evacuation centers, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, uh, as, as a follow-up, and to supplement the quest, uh, line of questioning of Senator Dinay, siguro it, it has to be rectified. Perhaps it's not just nine, but 12 LGUs affected. And if you add Tagaytay, baka madagdagan pa, and Alfonso. Mm -hmm. So, so my, my, my concern, uh, Mr. Chair, is we're not just referring to fisher folk, uh, farmers, uh, and other backyard uh, industry workers, but even institutional restaurants, hotels, is, is, there a, is there a forthcoming circular from the Dole that would uh, probably give some uh, financial space, so to speak, for the owners of the establishments, more than 1,000 in Tagaytay, for the workers who were not able to uh, report for work because of that very confusing, conflicting, distracting message coming from that undersecretary Den Singh of the DILG who was always asking the people not to go to Tagaytay. So is there any uh, administrative space that can be uh, given by Dole? Yung wag mo na magbayad ng ganito after uh, two months dahil hindi naman kayo nagtrabaho. 
uh, kayong mga miari ng restaurant hotels dahil hindi naman kayo kumita dahil uh, sarado kayo noon eh, dapat hindi mo na kayo mag-contribute ng ganito meron ba tayong ganong programa uh, secretary yun lang po uh, thank you your honor much as we would want to consider the suggestion of the honorable senator eh, wala po kaming magiging legal basis po diyan so, what we can do is as i said even, uh, even, um, so, sorry, Mr. Chair, even a force majeure uh, that the Secretary of Dole is not allowed administratively to give some uh, delay perhaps in, in their contributions. In, uh, alam niyo na po yun? Opo, uh, Your Honor, wala nga po kami ng ano. Eh. Oo nga po eh. No, pero wala kami talagang legal basis to do that. You know? We would want to, kasi considering the effects of the calamity done by Taal, eh, wala kaming magiging legal basis po dyan, Your Honor. I think yung emergency employment, dun talaga ang pupwedeng pumasok. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, one more item. Yeah, you have the floor. Pwede yung, yung silang umabol dun sa yung mga empleyado, Your Honor. Pwede silang umabol dun sa unemployment insurance from SSS and probably from ECC. Pero oh. yung sasabihin namin sa employer na... Uh, it has to have a legal basis. What what I suggest Yes, what, what I suggested to the other government agencies and some LGUs, Tagaita in particular, is for them to delay the delay the payment, the collection for business permits as well as real property taxes. Kasi na apektohan talaga sila eh. Wala talagang hanggang ngayon wala pa rin eh. So I, I think it would uh, provide an extra lifeline, and, and if uh, Dole can likewise do a, a parallel uh, space, administrative space for uh, em employees and employers, mas maganda po siguro. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. We'll look into that, Your Honor. But uh, initially, what we can do, especially for Tagantay, is probably implement our uh, emergency employment program, Your Honor. And I think just to clarify, it still exists. No work, no pay uh, policy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I know this is uh, not part of our agenda today, but uh, considering this is the Committee on Labor and Human Resources Development uh, uh, Committee, uh, we, we, we welcome the, uh, the issues raised by our uh, distinguished colleagues. We'll give the floor to uh, Secretary Bellio uh, of DOLE and uh, perhaps could give us uh, uh, his opening remarks and uh, updates with regard to... Uh, uh, let, let, let me uh, uh, try to uh, do some sort of partitioning here. Uh, our response to, uh, to those affected with the NCOV outbreak, the tension in Middle East, and then the uh, implementation of uh, MOU with Kuwait, the status, and the deploy deployment ban uh, in Kuwait. Uh, perhaps if we can uh, uh, do uh, part one to, to three regarding these uh, uh, matters. Thank you. Uh, you have the floor, uh, Secretary Bellio. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, maybe, Your Honor, uh, make I can start by giving a short background on the case of uh, uh, OFW Jeneline Villavende because her case brought about the decision of the governing board of the POEA to declare or implement a total deployment ban, Your Honor. So, with your permission, Your Honor, and the honorable members of the committee. Please, uh, Secretary, uh, please proceed. OFW Villavende arrived in Kuwait, Your Honor, to work as a household service worker in July 2019. This December, we learn about her death, allegedly in the hands of her employers. Agad agad, Your Honors, I declared, we declared a partial deployment ban to cover only the household service workers, new household service workers, Your Honor. On January 8, the remains of Ms. Villalvende was brought to Manila, and after we received a very short autopsy report from the Ministry of Interior of Quiet. I took it upon myself, Your Honor, to request the Secretary of Justice and the, Depart and the National Bureau of Investigation to conduct another autopsy. Yan napaka-elite yung, ano eh, yung 
report ng Ministry of, In of Health ng Kuwait, nakalagay lang doon, death arising from heart failure caused by physical injuries. Eh, medyo nagkaroon ako ng kuro-kuro na parang sa halip na bigyan tayo ng impo tamang information, parang may attempt to cover up. So, I requested NBI to conduct another autopsy. Fortunately, uh, nag-conduct nga. And there, we found out that Miss Villabende died because not only of physical injuries, but more is particular because of sexual abuse. Talagang brutalize yung ating kababayan, your honors. The term of the medical legal of NBI officer is na sodomize yung ating kababayan. And when he was reporting that he was so emotional, your honor, he was, a <laughs> I think it was the guy I met in Norala? Coronadal. Uh, Coronadal, uh, oh. Parang naiiyak no, si yung ating medical legal eh. Kasi sabi niya, kung tignan mo yung tao, yung babae, sabi niya, hindi lang yan minaltrato ng lima o sampung araw, sabi niya, mga minaltrato yan ng mga limang buwan. So because of that, Your Honor, I recommended to the POEA Governing Board to declare a deployment, total deployment ban. And when we say, Your Honor, total deployment ban, it means that we cannot deploy uh, new, uh, household, new household service workers and skilled and professionals, Your Honor. Ang accepted lang dito kasi uh, yung mga skilled and professional workers na categorized as balik manggagawa. Meaning they have a contract na babalikan? Yes, yes uh -huh. existing contract, Your Honor. So yung naging decision ng, uh, ng governing board ng POA. Now, <coughs> I would like to say something about uh, what we did when we visited the wake of OFW Jonaline, and through our OWA and Administrator uh, Kakdak, extended financial livelihood and educational assistance, uh, yung cash assistance, the usual 200,000, and then yung 762,000 as uh, insurance, then livelihood of 15,000, and scholarship for the six, the sister of Jeneline, kasi wala pang anak, dalaga pa po si Jeneline. And we also gave them some ano, uh, grocery items and allowance of 10,000. At this juncture, uh, with the indulgence of uh, our good secretary, we'd like to acknowledge our uh, distinguished colleague from Ilocos Norte, um, Senator Aimee Marcos. Please proceed, Secretary. Yes, you know, thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Your Honor, I'd like to inform this committee that I had a series of meetings with the Kuwait Ambassador to the Philippines, His Excellency Muzaid Saleh Ahmad al kuwait to expedite the resolution of the case and to be given priority by the Kuwait government. Because I made it as a condition, Your Honor, for the, up, for the lifting of the deployment ban, first is justice to Jeneline, and second, that they will finally agree to a standard employment contract, which the president has been insisting. This is a standard employment contract, Your Honor, that is supposed to contain the provisions which our president wants to be included. Mga simple provision lang po, ng kagaya ng yung passport, yung cellphone. Ito po yung kontrata na susunod na step after signing the memorandum that, of understanding. Is that, that correct? Is true, Your Honor. Thank you. So, dapat nandun yung provision na yung ating worker ay mayroong specific working hours. Hindi yung pinapatrabaho na may higit sampung oras. Meron din sana, nandun din sana yung provision na yung ating worker ay may specific sleeping hours po. Kasi kung minsan, maraming report na dalawa, tatlong oras na lang tulog ng ating mga workers. And then, of course, Your Honor, we expect that that co contract will also include a provision that our worker will be entitled to a one-day of uh, per week with pay at saka yung tinasabi yung kapala system your honor na yung ating mga workers hindi basta linilipat na wala siyang written consent 
and the approval of our labor attache. Po. I think what's also included is that they would uh, possess their passports yes, and at the same time the cell phones. Because cell phone. I think the, the, the parents of Jeneline called up, hindi siya makausap. Opo, yun nga po. Yun ang report nga po. So anyway, Your Honor, uh, the result of our meeting with the ambassador came up with a invitation for me to proceed to Kuwait and meet the my counterpart, the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Justice, the Ministry of Economic Affairs, and possibly the Prime Minister. Although I declined initially, na magipagmit sa Prime Minister hindi naman ako ganon katase. So I agreed to the invitation, provided that I can bring my technical working group, Your Honor, to be headed by one under secretary and two of my very competent administrators, Administrator Oralia and Administrator Kagdak, so that they can finally uh, come up with a standard employment contract to be signed uh, when they are there, Your Honor. So, yun po ang latest on uh, Villa Bende, Your Honor. And we hope that the death of Miss Villa Bende will bring not only a, uh, what we call, uh, Justice, Your Honor, but also a final employment contract to benefit all future OFWs, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, can we ask the DFA? Pero uh, just for clarification okay. lang, Chair, kasi di ba nag-uusap tayo tungkol dun sa deployment ban. Yung deployment ban nyo covers all domestic workers, whether new or may existing contract? Yes, Your Honor. And then for skilled naman ho, only so new... Existing, she says existing. If there's existing, that's part of balik manggagawa. Ma ma which means it's, it's exempt. Kahit ng balik manggagawa, eh, you know. Ban pa rin. Ban, 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 ban pa rin. Pero pag skilled workers ho, pag new, covered sila ng deployment ban, yes. pero pag may existing contract pa balik sila, balik manggagawa, you know. Pwede pa silang pwede bumali. Pa uh, and then more or less, ilan ho yung naapektuhan with this deployment ban? when it comes um, dun sa domestic helpers at saka dun sa skilled malaki. workers. Uh, Malaki-laki daw. <laughs> Sampung libo daw, Your Honor. For domestic or for all? For household, household service eh, for workers. Skilled. No. Sige, uh, Mr. Chair, sige, they can just submit to the committee. Sige, uh, can we... Uh, Pero, Your Honor, uh, to be candid with this honorable committee, meron din kami exemption because uh, there was a, uh, a loud cry from our OFWs, yung mga domestic helpers, na nakakuha ng OEC before the deployment ban. So in fairness, Your Honor, we, our board decided to allow them to go. OEC is Overseas Employment <laughs> Contract <laughs> Certificate, <laughs> yes. And ilan ho itong uh, domestic, uh, itong household wor ho household service workers na nakaalis kahit meron na tayong deployment ban? Yung mga nabigyan ng OEC, Your Honor, before the deployment ban. Mga ilan ho yan? Uh, hindi pa natin alam kasi marami pang dumarating, Your Honor. Eh. Oh, kasi ano marami pang dumarating? Yung mga nalaman na nila kasi na pwede na sila, so nadatingan na sila. For a while, hindi, akala nila covered na sila, so... They Meaning OEC uh, has already been issued. But even yeah, if it was issued, not all of them are aware that it has been issued. Yeah, okay, pero ngayon, hindi na tayo nag issue ng OEC. Hindi na po, hindi na po, Your Honor. Kasi parang hirap din ho i-monitor yan kung, di ba, kung legal or illegal ba yung pag-alis nila for, for Kuwait. That is true, Your Honor. Pero yung mga sinakatanggap ng OEC before the deployment ban, eh, kahit na alam nila may deployment ban, they were insisting, they went to the, my, our office, they went to the airport and waited for a possible deployment. So we finally decided to give them. Uh, let's, let's talk a bit uh, of this uh, scenarios. Nakakuha siya ng kontrata with the recruitment agency, tapos nag-apply siya ng OEC. Ngayon, deployment uh, ban, hindi siya tutuluyan, no? but itong kababayan natin gumastos. Uh, for the uh, 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 no for the application dun sa recruitment agency. Now the question is, and I think I raised this with VOEA, can they actually reimburse the 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 nagastos nila? 
Your Honor, there fee? is in placement fee. Of course, the HSW wala nang placement Opa. fee, no. But the others na gumastos ho. May direktiba po ang aming administrator ng POEA na i-refund po. Na i-refund. Okay. okay, that's Opa. good. Uh, Ma-refund yung placement fee. Yes, Malinaw po 'yan para sa ating mga kababayan na nagmo-monitor ho ngayon. Sige, we'll give the floor now to DFA to uh, give us updates. Siguro ma'am, yung uh, una uh, you were asking dun sa updates din ho dun sa mga kababayan natin nagtatrabaho dun sa apektado ng NCOV, especially in Wuhan. Kung kung, kung meron po tayong update. Sir, uh, Your Honor, which do you want me to to go first for the Mersco, ay for the Mersco, for the coronavirus or um, because we have received an, an Uh, autopsy report from from Kuwait this Friday and we have an unofficial translation which we're already allowed to share with the committee sure. kahit ano po doon uh, we can we can we can go on from from ah, okay. that to to the issues at hand yeah, coronavirus uh, okay, we prepared a slide for the coronavirus it ano uh, long uh, presentation uh, three slides okay good thank you Um, uh, your Honor, the no novel coronavirus or 2019 NCOV, this is what we got with DOH yesterday um, under um, the Undersecretary of uh, DOH was with us yesterday. Interagency we had an in interagency yesterday and now Secretary Duque called for another interagency in DOH to, uh, and called for DFA for uh, the possibility of repatriation evacuation. It's a new strain that has not been previously identified in humans and it's only in December 31, 2019 when the WHO was alerted to several cases of pneumonia in Wuhan City, Hubei province of China. In January 7, the Chinese authorities identified a new type of coronavirus. Next slide. Next slide. Um, DFA is closely working with the DOH to properly respond to this emergency. Um, this is not a usual assistance to nationals issue, your honors, because this is really a public health issue because um, we could not just repatriate our citizens because we also have to protect the health of our citizens here in the Philippines. Health protocols in evacuating overseas Filipinos from Wuhan and other affected areas in China and travel restrictions for the Filipinos to China have to be taken into consideration. So yesterday we had the um, interagency with DOH and the experts and the Philippine ambassador to China was there yesterday and we had uh, a telecon with our consul general in Shang uh, consul uh, general to Shanghai uh, and our consul general in Guangzhou also was there. Uh, the DFA is uh, now attending to an interagency task force. Next slide please. Okay, the Philippine consulate in Shanghai is coordinating with the Filipino community leaders in Wuhan. Um, there are around 150 Filipinos. Uh, we just want to flag that we have several undocumented workers in China. Uh, before this incident, we knew only of four Filipinos in Wuhan. But when this came to, uh, when there was already a crisis, uh, nag-150, and I think there are more. So we are asking them to please coordinate with our uh, Consulate General. The problem is the city is on lockdown. Nobody can enter, nobody can leave. Um, I think a lot of people are panicking because of the, cons uh, of the Americans are evacuating. Yes, because they have a Consul General in Wuhan. And I think, tayo wala po. Uh, so but it's under the jurisdiction of Shanghai. So when you say they're evacuating, they're just... Uh, um, Asking their people to go there. Um, Your to Honor, we out. are in coordination with a different post in China mm. because it's not easy for all, uh, us also to move because I think they even they locked down and all the provincial buses couldn't also move from one province to another. So we are asking the other missions on how they're coordinating with the government, the Chinese government, so that they'd be able to take their people out. So so far, what's our what's the status? What other countries, countries are doing? Actually, there's uh, the, the French flying? government because they have a very big plant in Wuhan. Um, but uh, And the others are also manifesting South Korea. But of course, we cannot even land a plane or even bring a bus inside. So uh, you have to make representations with the national government and the provincial governments 
in, in China at the moment. So um, we are already, in Hong Kong, Your Honor, is already an emergency response level, and we are sending masks to our, to our Hong Kong to Hong Kong because that's the biggest concentration of Filipinos. We have 240,000 Filipinos in Hong Kong and there's already a shortage of masks. And yesterday, uh, the DOH uh, is asking all our uh, all Filipinos in affected areas, especially in the epicenter, to wear not only masks but gloves also because you, you're not supposed to touch your face. So usually if you have uh, uh, disposable gloves, the tendency for you is not to touch your face because you know very well. And every time you go out, when you return to your home, they are asked to shower because as, uh, to ensure that... Uh, they're very, they're clean. So as of now, Your Honor, we are waiting for the result of the interagency on how we will respond to so the crisis. So at this point in time, wala ho tayong uh, decision pa as to whether they wanted to come home, hindi natin sila dadalhin. Yes, if I may. Yes, Narinig uh, ko na Marcos. may 30 na tagawuhan na Pilipino na nais nang umuwi. Pero pag mo, you're going to bring them, evacuate them, in order to bring the virus over here. Siyempre, ayaw natin yung mangyari. So to I think until now, our best option is simply to tell them to follow the protocols in China and observe the lockdown. Wala naman choice. To date, the uh, China government has uh, refused to allow any country to evacuate their nationals so far. Miski yung sa US at sa French, lahat naka-lockdown. Siguro ang mahahanlin tulad natin dito ay eh yung Ebola virus nung uh, nagkalat sa West Africa. And if you recall, ang nangyari, yung mga peacekeepers natin, mga sundalo natin na napunta ron sa Ebola virus, dinala muna ni um, General Katapang for 21 days quarantine sa Caraballo Island ng Corregidor. Siguro yun din ang kailangan natin pag-isipan kung saan dadalhin ang mga ito dahil hindi naman pwedeng dalhin direktamente dito sa Pilipinas na sa Manila, Limbawa, or a highly populated place where they will simply infect and spread the virus. Yes, Your Honor. And actually, we are, uh, our WHO uh, people in Geneva are also recommending that they have to be quarantined first outside Wuhan in China then they are brought here and quarantined again. Which is my question yes, po, asan yung mga stages ng quarantine? We are uh, cognizant of the 21-day quarantine period required. If we finally evacuate them, anong plano ron? San tayo maglalagay ng mga Pilipinong kinakailangan ng quarantine um, at isolation? Your Honor, presently the DOH is meeting with the DFA and I think today Secretary Duque will come up with the protocol um, on the procedure of the of the quarantine, if it's possible, Your Honor, because um, so far, as you've said, Your Honor, um, China is very adamant in not letting anyone in and out of the of uh, the, the of the uh, no, of the epicenter. Pero sa ngayon wala pang plano. Whether in China, kung um, hindi naman affected yung lugar sa China, kung ika quarantine don, or kung maghahanap tayo dito sa Pilipinas ng lugar na hindi masyadong populated, wala pa. Your Honor, uh, DOH has not yet given us a definite plan because uh, when it comes to health issues, it's not really our forte. But so they're part of the interagency. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, 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 echo itong yes, Your Honor. Uh, they're, uh, they're also having an interagency now in the, the Department of Health. And yes, yes, Your Honor, we have another uh, Undersecretary Dulay is now in the Department of Health. And we're just uh, waiting for the final decision of the DOH because. Um, DFA stands ready to repatriate. However, as the expertise in health matters, we leave it to the DOH, Your Honor. Mr. Chair? Nabanggit ninyo yung uh, Americans are evacuating their nationals. Paano nangyari to? Can you update us, please? Kasi ang pagkadinig ko, the China government has refused any movement of any nationals despite the request of their governments. Um, Your Honor, as of yesterday, I know they have a plan. And we also... Pero hindi pa nangyayari. We, we, there have not yet evacuated. Oh, it. that's right. But uh, I, I misunderstood that you said that the Americans were uh, able to evacuate their, their national. Sorry, sir. Sorry, Kasi Your hindi Honor. pinayagan ng mga, ng mga Chinese eh. Yes, Kishino. Your Honor. But just to update, we have Filipinos working also in the American consulate in, in China. Senator Nancy, uh, you have the Mr. floor. Sir, Yusek Ariala, what are, are we monitoring our OFWs? Kasi parang napanood ko sa news, parang mayroon tayong isang OFW sa Hong Kong ba? na naka-quarantine ata ngayon. So, um, siguro you can give us a report. 
Yes, Your Honor. Uh, one of our household service workers was in direct contact with someone who was uh, um, who had MERS coro uh, MERS corona, uh, uh, well, coro novel and coronavirus. Uh, so she's under quarantine right now. Um, the the consul general is calling her every day. She still she's very healthy, but I think part of their protocol is uh, when there's contact tracing and you have been. Uh, um, in contact with someone who has NCOV, you are automatically quarantined whether or not you show signs of infection. But they're saying because it's very asymptomatic, it takes 14 days or 10 days to, to even manifest. So you don't know who is infected. That's why there's a shorted, so shortage of masks and also of gloves in Hong Kong right now. And there are protocols to assist our OFWs, um, katula na itong, uh, uh, ito naka-quarantine ngayon. Meron na kayong set na may, kunyari, yung isang OFW natin, eh, uh, na quarantine or worst case scenario na infect. Um, meron na silang assistance na makukuha from our embassy yes, or sir. from our Yes, consulate. sir. On our, all kinds of assistance can be given in coordination with the Ministry of Health of the country of destination. Um, I think uh, Hong Kong is really very strict when it comes to uh, NCOV, uh, like just like when they had the SARS crisis. Um, the only thing right now is, of course, because of social media, there are, there's a lot of things that are going on. We just like to ask our OFWs to please just listen to the Consulate General and to the Facebook page of the Consulate General and the website because there are other very alarming news that you see in um, social media. So a lot of, of people are already panicking. Pero sa Wuhan, wala pa. Wala pa tayong naririnig na balita na... We do not have any confirmed report of someone who has been... Because the whole city is under quarantine, who was confirmed to have NCOV, Your Honor. Yeah, or naka-quarantine. But the whole... Everyone in Wuhan, Your Honor, is... Quarantine. Required. And there's even a professor there who self-quarantined... Uh, who decided to self-quarantine himself because he's thinking that since you cannot really determine who's a carrier and who's not. So he just locked himself in his unit in Wuhan. Pero dun sa mga countries, uh, dun sa, for example, Shanghai, hindi pa naman siya lockdown, di ba? But meron ng reporting dun. What if yung isa nating kababayan, eh, gusto na umuwi sa Pilipinas. Meron ba tayong ganung, uh, parang assistance if they want to um, come home? Um, Your Honor, we, as of now, uh, our instructions is to give all kinds of assistance to nationals, to, to any Filipino who is asking for help. However, the repatriation and evacuation, we have to consult with DOH because we do not also want to unduly compromise our, yeah, um, the, the rest of the, the country because uh, we don't want to bring the, should they be infected, we do not want to bring the virus here to oh, the kasi di ba, hindi pa naman buong China yes, naka-lockdown. So may mga lugar pa na open like, I guess, Beijing, hindi pa naman lockdown, di ba? Mm -hmm. But there's already one confirmed. Yeah, and death. Shanghai, meron din. Yes, Your Honor. So may probability na may mga OFW tayo na gusto nang umalis na rin sa Shanghai yes, Your Honor. and Beijing. And they can they can come home kasi wala namang lockdown. Um, Your Honor, we're going to consult your Honor, first with DOH, because uh, we are not medical experts. And of course, this is a very delicate issue also because it's a public health issue. So we need clearance with the Department of Health as to the protocol that has to be followed in bringing home our OFWs in, in China, particularly the ones in Wuhan province. Ah, Mr. Chair, um, hindi naman yung mga OFW, but kasi di ba, we are still receiving Chinese tourists. Ano na yung, moving forward, meron pinag-aaralan nyo na ba na for the meantime, hindi muna tayo tatanggap um, coming from, let's say, Beijing, Shanghai, and um, other, um, yung mga infected na, or meron ng uh, widespread na itong uh, coronavirus? Um, Your Honor, that matter was discussed yesterday, and I think they're discussing it also now with uh, with DOH. Um, as you know, Your Honor, uh, those things also have diplomatic implications. So, um, so that's why DOH and the uh, DFA have to closely work together when it comes to this uh, handling of the issue, Your Honor. At the moment, lahat nung nag-lockdown, hindi na tayo tumatanggap ng turista because, di ba, nung nag-lockdown na nga sa Wuhan, may nakaland pa sa, yes, sa uh, Aklan eh. They were... Um, um, I think, Your Honor, we were told yesterday, but because now the whole week is a holiday for China because of Chinese New Year, which was, I think, extended until Sunday. Um, 
Um, we have been told yesterday by the, the ambassador that there was already uh, um, tour groups are not going to be, uh, they already banned the tour groups from leaving China. So far, that's what we know. So, but we just have to um, confirm uh, this afternoon um, what I what's the protocol that has, has been agreed upon by the DOH and the DFA. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I couldn't give more because I'm not a medical practitioner and I couldn't assume things because uh, we do not have the competence as to, to health issues. Yes. Siguro, uh, as a foreign po policy lang, kasi nga katulad ng sinabi mo, may diplomatic implication yung not allowing them. But you know, kung si China nga mismo sila na yung <laughs> nagkukusa, di ba? So parang why can't we take a proactive role in protecting then our, our citizens? Yes, Your Honor. We'll uh, convey it to to our undersecretary who's with the uh, DOH right now. And once we get an advisory, we'll inform the Senate as soon as we have them. Thank you. And that's uh, that's that's our uh, intention here. No, uh, I hope that uh, uh, the uh, members of the interagency uh, task force would echo our uh, our uh, sentiments. I think uh, Senator Aimee Marcos made a, a, a very good suggestion as to look into this possibil possibility of uh, na before landing here in uh, Naiya, sa ibang lugar muna, and uh, they can be quarantined there. And it's not something uh, new for all of us. But at this juncture, let me uh, acknowledge our distinguished uh, colleague, uh, the senator who got the most number of votes in the OF, OF uh, in the overseas uh, absentee voting, uh, Senator uh, Bato de la Rosa, who is also a member of this uh, committee. Thank you, sir, for. Uh, being here now, uh, Yusek, can we uh, proceed with the uh, with the other matters, not just the uh, NCOV? We'd, we'd like to talk about yeah. the uh, the uh, repatriation, the uh, uh, case of uh, Villa Bende okay. uh, and the likes. Your Honor, I, I was just sharing with Secretary Bello that last Friday we were given an Arabic. Uh, Ministry of Interior, General Department of Criminal Evidence, forensic report on the Villa Vende case. And we have an official translation that we could share with, with the committee. Um, I, ca I, could, I did not really understand the medical part, uh, we'll, but we'll, we'll fur be furnishing yes. the committee a copy. Yes, uh, maybe uh, uh, furnish us a copy. Yes. And uh, I think later we will, we will be hearing anyways from our uh, friends from NBI. Uh, th this is, Your Honor, this is the autopsy the, with all the... Uh, That's the autopsy of Kuwait. Of Kuwait, sir, but... Um, yeah, but we don't believe them because the, the last time they were, they were saying it's... It uh, well, essentially, Your Honor, uh, I, I, I read the NBI report and I read also this report. There are... Some, there are some similarities, but I do not want to, I'm not an expert, but maybe we'll just give them a copy also. But and I think, uh, Your Honor, quite interesting here is the contents of the prosecutor's memorandum that the abuse began in October. Your Honor, uh, Secretary Bello. we just uh, gave you a copy of the autopsy report, the latest uh, autopsy The latest, report, because uh, uh, from, uh, from Kuwait. NBI. And this is from, from Kuwait. Our NBI, NBI. Your Honor. So, so, so you got a copy, Secretary, but uh, have you seen this? And uh, uh, did you make some uh, comments uh, regarding this uh, 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 it's report? It's not as complete as, our, uh, as the okay. findings of our NBI, Your Honor. Okay, because you made mention a while ago uh, 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 the reason uh, for being uh, your decision to... Uh, do re-autopsy here in the Philippines is because of the fact that the Kuwaiti government or the report says uh, it's, 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 uh, si, 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 uh, si Janeline uh, died uh, uh, in a natural uh, manner, is that correct? Uh, Your Honor, I, I st stated earlier that the original autopsy reports furnished by the Ministry of Interior of Kuwait was insufficient. In other words, I look at it as a, as an attempt to cover up. That is the reason why I immediately requested Ask for our NBI autopsy. to yes. conduct another forensic investigation, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, question lang. Anong difference nung autopsy na yan dun sa autopsy na yan? Yung autopsy report ng ating NBI must yeah. comprehensive, Your Honor. Hindi, sec, di ba you mentioned yung unang autopsy ba yun? Nasabi niya hindi kompleto. Yung coming from the Kuwait, 
Yes, in, talagang hindi kompleto. One sentence But lang po yun. But itong binibigay mo sa amin ngayon, ngayon Yusek? Ito ang latest nila. Sa dalawang beses siya na autopsy sa Kuwait? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, oh. <laughs> this, this is a four-pager uh, report. Yes. But uh, before we continue, let me acknowledge uh, Senator uh, Bongo, who's also a champion for OFWs. Uh, thank you for being here, sir. Um, Yusek, siguro just for clarification, kasi parang dalawang, parang lumalabas, meron tayong dalawang autopsy report from Kuwait and one from uh, NBI. Your Can you please confirm? Uh, Your Honor, the first is a death certificate from Kuwait that says the it's a, it's like a mortuary certificate uh, the the one that we had earlier uh, uh, is the death certificate which only says that acute failure of heart in respiration so this is the result. first copy of the autopsy report so this is the, so this no, is this only is not an autopsy report your honor it's, it's a, a death, death certificate. certificate so yes, this is honor. there's only one there's only one autopsy, autopsy report itong kakabigay yes sir honor lang nila your honor sige po When, uh, no, when I, you uh, know, when I recommended to the board of POEA that we declare a partial deployment ban, I had a meeting with the ambassador of Kuwait, and I told him that the report that you gave me looks more not as an autopsy report, but as a cover-up report, I said. That is the reason why now they came up with the most recent autopsy report from the Ministry of Interior this time, Your Honor. Mr. Chair? Okay, yes. Uh, siguro, para, hindi ba pwede para walang conflict? Can't we have a joint autopsy report na kasama ng NBI, yung Kuwait counterpart? Pwede po ba yun? Is that, I don't know, Yusek Ariola, pwede po ba yun? I, no, look, I, think, I don't think it's possible anymore. Eh, you know, Nakalibing na po. At saka nandito na po yung labi ng ating kababayan. Siguro, uh, if, if with the indulgence of my uh, distinguished colleagues here, perhaps we can ask uh, the, 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 the NBI to give us uh, the, an update and uh, with regard to the uh, uh, report that they uh, conducted. Mr. Chair, siguro yeah. pwede, bago magsalita si NBI, yung NBI report to ba natin tatanggapin sa Kuwait if we pag nag-start na yung trial ng case? Your Honor, I, I don't think it is, uh, no, it is uh, necessary for them to accept our uh, findings or not. It is for our own satisfaction, Your Honor. They have their own. Now, it's up for them to give justice to our people. If they will use their autopsy report in the case against the employers, Then they have, you know, they have to reckon with our decision that justice is not given to our OFWs. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Let's, uh, with the indulgence of my colleagues, let's give the floor to our uh, Deputy Director for Forensic Investigation, NBI, Sir uh, Ferdinand Lavin. Sir, you're recognized. Good morning, uh, Your Honors, Mr. Chair. Uh, for the NBI on the Villavendi case, the NBI, upon the uh, request of the good Secretary of uh, Labor and Employment, Uh, cooperated with uh, the requesting party and uh, on instructions of uh, Secretary Guevara of the Department of Justice, uh, immediately dispatched uh, Dr. Rodahi, Ricardo Rodahi, the chief, no less, of our uh, medical legal division to Sarangani and uh, they're on to conduct the uh, autopsy. This is already, uh, your honors, the second autopsy considering that there was a, uh, a prior autopsy conducted on uh, the body, on the cadaver of uh, Villavende. Uh, as a matter of uh, standard forensic operating uh, protocol or procedure, photographs were taken uh, during the entire or the entirety of the conduct of the uh, forensic investigation, also including uh, the conduct of uh, the laboratory examinations on the body parts or organs or tissues taken from uh, the human remains of uh, Jendelen Bedebende. While we have here, your honors, the uh, photographs, the images are very disturbing, highly revolting, and uh, we do not want to agitate the situation. And in respect of the uh, dignity of the family, uh, with the indulgence, and uh, I hope the, the uh, committee will understand 
we request for a, a closed door or uh, an executive session. Uh, we would like to share with you the uh, photographs. The photographs may be viewed, again, uh, to the exclusion of our good friends from the media. Uh, this is for a better appreciation of the uh, technical terms that uh, Dr. Rodahi here will be uh, discussing uh, later. We have here the uh, photographs, uh, Your Honor. Uh, we would like to uh, share with you, but... Uh, uh, we, we, we totally understand, uh, Sir Levin. May I just uh, move for uh, one minute suspension uh, to, to uh, talk to my colleagues? Just one minute suspension. Um, we resume the uh, committee hearing uh, upon the, uh, the advice of uh, my colleagues. Uh, Sir Lavin, can, can we just get a summary na lang ho muna and uh, we'll, we'll uh, uh, push through with the executive session later on so that uh, we'll be able to, to hear uh, 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 some of our stakeholders uh, na naririto po ngayong uh, umaga ito. Thank you, Your Honor, and uh, with the indulgence of the uh, Chair, May I uh, humbly ask that uh, Dr. Rodahi be recognized? Thank you, yes, Rana. Dr. Rodahi, you're, you're recognized. Just give us a, a, a brief summary lang, sir, and uh, perhaps later yung uh, more detailed uh, report with the executive session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And good morning, Your Honors. I conducted the autopsy examination, re-autopsy examination last January 9 uh, this year. First, it is always our protocol that whenever we conduct, we will conduct an autopsy uh, examination, there must be a consent coming from the immediate relatives or from the parents. So the, uh, the consent was duly signed by the father, uh, Mr. Abilardo Villavende. Our next procedure is to identify the victim, whether uh, it was Jeneline Villabindi or not. So the stepmother had a hard time of identifying the body because she cannot recognize anymore because of the state of the body of the victim where uh, she is malnourished. Butot balat. So the only uh, identifying feature was the birthmark in, uh, in her uh, knee. So she was identified by the mother. On an uh, autopsy examination, all the injuries were being photographed, external injuries, and properly recorded Uh, record, recorded in our anatomic diagram. The significant findings on my autopsy report that there was uh, an autopsy incision in the head part, which uh, mistaken as a lacerated wound because the method was roughly done. In our uh, setup, When we conduct the autopsy examination, we must see to it that we will restore whatever the incisions we are going to, made, to make. Next is the external injuries. There were external injuries found in the body of Jeneline. And the external injuries were contusions, pasa. There were also hematoma. Hematoma is the effusion of blood or extravasation of blood in a newly formed cavity. This is caused by a blunt instrument with excessive application of force in order to form a cavity. And this was found on the left side at the back of her head. There were also abrasions. Abrasions are the 
superficial uh, removal of the skin. This is caused by uh, caused by a rub or friction against a hard or rough object. There will also contus abrasions. This meaning of contus abrasions, there was forcible contact before friction occurs. And most of the injuries are found at the back of the victim. In my examination, at the back part of the victim, there were uh, infected, healed, healing, and recent injuries found in the back, at the back of the victim. And too many to count. Too many to count that uh, I just uh, describe it and have the demarcation line or boundaries from the right shoulder downwards to the uh, lumbar area or above the anus. Why there were uh, so many injuries found uh, at the back of the victim? Because this is a sort of submission. She cannot endure the pain, so she will just hide her face in order, uh, not, uh, in order not to involve her anterior part or the frontal part. And then, why there were uh, heal, healing infected wounds? These wounds were not inflicted at the time of her death, meaning these wounds, it could be inflicted two days, three days, or within her stay in uh, her employer. Then, in my examination, the anogenital part of the victim, there was multiple contusions on the vagina of the victim, and that will involve, include the labia majora, minora, the perineum, and then the, uh, the vaginal canal. Hymen, this is the most significant uh, part of the uh, genitalia of a woman. It is a fold of mucous membrane ex extending partly across the opening into the vagina. In Lehman's term, this is what we call membrane. This is an indication, uh, uh, it is a seal. It is an indication that the woman is a virgin. In the case of Janeline Villavindi, there were uh, lacerated wounds in the hymen, meaning the woman is a virgin. The lacerated, uh, the lacerated laceri uh, the lacerations were complete, deep, at five and nine o'clock position, corresponding to the face of a watts. If we are looking to a wall clock, and then those numbers will correspond. Uh, Dr. Rodahe, uh, with your indulgence, uh, nahihirapan na rin po kaming lunukin, especially knowing that uh, uh, this is not an executive session. Uh, perhaps if uh, uh, we can just uh, generalize and uh, perhaps, uh, I think we, we already have a, 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 okay. a, uh, a an idea of yeah. what really happened and uh, you're saying upon your examination, you uh, have no doubt that uh, Janeline has been a victim of physical abuse and sexual violence. Is that correct, uh, Your Honor? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, based on the bruises, wounds, and uh, sexual uh, violence committed against her, what is your uh, um, uh, conclusion when you talk about the physical strength of the uh, tormentor? Can it be done by just one person or... Uh, one very strong person, a man or a woman, uh, what is your... Uh, Those uh, injuries uh, sustained by the victim, it could be done by a one, two, or three more person, Your Honor. And, and based on the wounds and scars of uh, Janeline, uh, Dr. Uh, Rodai, would their uh, behavioral or physical manifestation of uh, abuse clearly? Definitely, Your Honor. Thank you, thank you. Senator Aimee. Yes, Mr. Chair, if I may inquire, 
In what way does your autopsy report differ from the first and second reports derived from the Kuwaiti government? I cannot give the difference, Your Honor, because I have not read the first autopsy. What I did is the re-autopsy examination, Your Honor. I think uh, this is the first time that uh, we are uh, seeing this uh, autopsy report coming from the uh, uh, embassy of the state of uh, Kuwait. So perhaps we will uh, give a copy of this uh, uh, autopsy report to our uh, chief medical legal in NBI and perhaps uh, you can give us your uh, comments regarding this uh, uh, autopsy report. But you were in receipt of the first report, is that correct, Secretary? And Delio? I think it's not an autopsy report, if I'm not it mistaken. It was merely a death, certificate. a death certificate, is that correct? I, I don't think, Your Honor, the NBI have a copy of this, Your Honor. The first the one, first, Paul? Uh, although it is not entitled as an autopsy report, Your Honor, it says that it is the cause of death according to this certificate. So, in effect, it is serving as an autopsy report. Kung sinasabi ko anong dahilan ng kapagkamatay. Uh, akala ko may report ng una kasi bakit tayo humingi ng ikalawa? Ito po, Your Honor. I'm referring to this, Your Honor. This is the certificate issued by the Ministry of Health of Kuwait. And although it is not an autopsy report, it says that it, it certifies to the cost of death of uh, Ms. Jensen. I think it's uh, glaring when the Secretary of Labor made mention that it appears there is an attempt to cover up and that's the reason why he uh, 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 requested for the re-autopsy. Is that correct, uh, Your Honor? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yung <coughs> lumabas sa medical legal report mo, Dr. Rodahe, is uh, very clear na itong biktima ay pinahirapan po over a long period of time. Yes, Your Honor. M mga October pa nag-start? October, uh, October or within the, within, uh, the period of her stay in uh, her employer. So, imagine mo no, kung relative mo yun o kaya kapatid mo, yeah. ganun ang ginagawa. Tapos wala tayong nagawa dito dahil, I don't know, uh, paano natin i-respond yung ganun sitwasyon. But sabi, sabi ni, sabi ni, Secretary Bilio claimed that uh, he repeatedly asked her agency, Five Star Recruitment and Manpower Corporation, to bring her home mm -hmm. because of maltreatment and uh, underpayment of her employer. But her cries went unanswered. Uh, uh, may, may we know from Secretary Bilio kung ano bang pwede natin gawin dito sa mga uh, agency? Uh, Pag wala silang ginawa, napabayaan lang nila ito. Ano bang... Uh, Your Honor, the agency is under suspension pending resolution of uh, the case against her by the Department by the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration, Your Honor. With the indulgence of Senator Bato, the uh, president of Five Star Recruitment Agency is also here if he wanted to raise some questions also. Yes, uh, Mr. Rinaldo Mudamba, the president of Five Star Recruitment Agency. Yung sinabi ni Secretary Bilio na unanswered yung kanyang complaint sa inyo, uh, what, what should have you done? What should, uh, what, what have you done? Your Honor, ginawa namin ang lahat ng uh, magawa namin tungkol sa problema ni Jenaline. Uh, una po, uh, from uh, July hanggang November, uh, October, Meron pong communication yung family ni Jenny Lynn. Ang wala lang po communication mula nung uh, November na po hanggang December. Opo. 
let, let, let me just uh, clarify with the indulgence of Senator Bato. I think September 2019, uh, based again, this is based on reports, when Janeline uh, complained uh, uh, about, about, about the maltreatment uh, and underpaid uh, salaries. Um, that 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 month, November, uh, September of 2019, uh, would you confirm this? Oh, for your uh, honor. Pero wala po kami what did you do? <coughs> wala po kami natanggap na reklamong uh, maltreatment. Noong September? September. And then ang, November? Ang, re ang reklamo lang po is uh, delayed po ang kanyang salary sweldo. There, there, there's a complaint pa rin, sir. Uh, Opo. Pero gum oh. ginawan po namin ng para nito at uh, nagpapadala na po ng uh, maayos si Jenny. How did you know na nagpapadala na? Uh, uh, sa, sa, sa mga dear niya po. Okay. And then December 13, 2019, her parents tried to call her. Uh, nakatawag pa rin po. But the call was answered by her female uh, uh, employer. Opo. Yeah. Hindi pa ba red flag yun, sir? Or did you uh, even report this to POEA? Hindi po. Kaya nga po pinapuntahan na namin si Jeneline sa kanyang bahay. Pumunta po yung isek sek sekretary namin na si Miss Karima para i-check po yung uh, kalagayan. When is this, uh, sir? When uh, was this? December 10, Your Honor. Sa, sa, sa ang bahay? Ay, Mr. Chair, sa ang bahay? Sa quiet na bahay? Opo, Your Honor. Tapos ano nangyari doon? Ah... Uh, Una po, uh, kinausap nila si Jeneline uh, para makita yung sitwasyon, yung mga, kasi wala po siyang, hindi na siya matawagan ng amo mula January, November po hanggang December, wala pong tawag, ang, hindi na siya matawagan. So, nagutos na po yung office doon, napuntahan si Jeneline at uh, nakita naman po si Jeneline doon sa bahay at nakausap. Tapos hindi niya na-determine na talagang in dire need of uh, uh, wala, uh, wala. Yung si sir, sir, napakinggan, sorry, napakinggan niyo ba yung report ni uh, Dr. Rodahe? Napakinggan po namin at meron din po akong record dito okay, sa akin uh, dito na pwede kong ilapas. Even before nung, nung namatay po siya, Opo. ilang beses na siyang inabuso at uh, may physical na abuse na ho. Maari mula nung umpisa pa hanggang sa pagkamatay niya is namamaltrato na siya. Pero meron pa ako dito nga uh, interview sa kanyang, ano, video interview sa kanyang mother na okay naman po yung communication na wala siyang sinasabi from July to uh, October 27 na wala siyang binabanggit na sinasaktan man siya or ano man. So, doon po ako nagtataka bakit uh, ang report natin ay matagal na sinasaktan. Yung mother niya mismo ang nagpapatunay na wala pong uh, Sige nangyaring... Sige po, granting uh, you're telling the truth. So, why? <laughs> granting you're telling the truth. So, so bakit ho nasuspinde? Uh, Admin na uh, Olalia, itong uh, uh, five-star recruitment agency. Yes, Mr. Chair, your honors, good morning po. Uh, isa po sa responsibilities ng mga agencies, eh, hindi lang po yung mag-deploy ng OFWs. Pinaka-importante po at ina-emphasize po namin, after deployment, they have to strictly monitor yung whereabouts po at conditions ng kanilang mga dineploy na OFWs. And part of this monitoring responsibility is to submit a regular monitoring report. At pag meron pong significant event na nangyari po sa isang OFW na de-deploy nila, they're supposed to submit a significant report immediately after the uh, incident happened. Wala pong nangyaring ganon, Your Honor. Kaya po namin sila sinuspin. So, pwedeng gawa-gawa lang niya yung sinasabi niya dahil wala ko kayong report? Yes, sir. Opo. Okay. Yes, uh, Yusek uh, Ariola. Your Honor, uh, as to the unofficial translation of the Ministry of Interior, the prosecutor's memorandum is very telling because it says that the abuse started in October until December 22, 2019. And as to the manner how it was uh, conducted, she was assaulted with an iron on her shoulder and beaten with a hand on her head, back and face, and so on and so forth. Your Honor, we have provided the committee with uh, the, and they also used a wooden spoon. And yes, I, I have it here. Host. She was beaten with a wooden spoon on her head, then kicked to the waist, and stabbed with a vehicle key on her back. Um, but you were saying, pinuntahan po ninyo, this is October, mid-October. October 10, Your Honor. I know, December no, 10. Kanina, kanina December po, 10, sorry. Nyo, December sorry, Your 10. Honor, yeah. Yes. Sorry. So, ta katatapos lang ho nito. Wala ho, hindi ko kaya siya talaga magre-reklamo na ganito kung totoong nakita niyo po siya. Iyon po ang sinabi, wala po siyang sinabing uh, iba. Na, and you didn't report this to POEA? Uh, hindi na po kasi uh, hindi naman po siyang sinasaktan. Although you are aware of the, uh, the, 
the regulations na dapat nagre-report ho kayo. Opo. Opo. Yeah, okay. lang. Nothing uh, uh admin hands uh you want to say something? Uh you have the floor. Admin yes, hands takdap. No? Uh nakausap po namin yung mother uh and hindi ho to, kung 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 i-recall ko yung sinabi ng mother, hindi po totoo na naayos yung salary issue. Uh, kasi yung, noong October 27, which was the last time the mother, stepmother talked to Jeneline, uh, may salary problem pa rin. 70 out of 120 KD ang remit And as late as November 2019, 70 out of 120 KD pa rin ang niremit ni Jeneline. Uh, pangalawa, yung sinasabi po na nakausap naman si Jeneline at wala siyang sinasabing maltreatment, malinaw po dun sa stepmother na nung huli niyang nakausap si Jeneline nung October 27, by cellphone, katabi niya yung female employer. So, under duress, under pressure. So, her statement via cell phone could not have been treated or swallowed hook, line, and sinker kasi katabi nga ho yung female employer. Uh, Senator Bongo, uh, you have the floor. Uh, morning, Administrator Hans uh, Leukakda. Il, sa pagkaalam nyo, ilan ba ang mga anak nitong mga employer doon? Sir, the information that we have is tatlo daw po yung anak. Ilang taon na po? Tatlo. Uh, sir, I just do not have the exact ages. Uh, when I talked to uh, Charge de Fair Lumondot, I was in Kuwait uh, two weeks ago. Sabi niya, mga late 20s up to 30s na raw yung edad nung anak. Tatlong anak na lalaki. But uh, upon my return here, sir, uh, I acquired info naman ho na menor de edad naman daw ho yung dalawa do sa tatlo. So, uh, hindi po klaro sa akin ngayon kung ano yung exact ages, but tatlo raw po yung anak na lalaki. Uh, to Secretary Bellio, are you not discounting the possibility of the involvement ng mga anak kung sa kasagali? Anong, anong sa tingin mo? Your Honor, considering the autopsy report <coughs> from the NBI, Your Honor, I... But walang, hindi yata na anak mo. I cannot discount the possibility, Your Honor, because we also met a girl who related to us some informations which are not uh, validated as of today but there was an information that the two two of the children uh, assaulted generally so that could probably be the reason why uh, the result of the autopsy report of the NBI your honor Marami na bang nangyayari? Na nangyayari ganito na iba yung resulta ng autopsy doon. Tapos pagdating dito sa NBI, marami na bang mga ganitong uh, uh, instances na magkaiba po ang resulta ng uh, autopsy mula sa ibang bansa and then dito sa ating... So far, uh, Your Honor, <coughs> we never uh, conduct the autopsy examination. I never received the original autopsy report from any other countries, especially Middle East. So most of the uh, bodies from Middle East, eh, wala na hong internal organs. And that will include the brain and the thoraco, abdominal ba organs. Bakit po? I just do not know with their protocol. If they will conduct an autopsy examination, maybe they will remove all the uh, internal organs, but in the Philippines, we will always uh, get a portion of the organ, not the whole organ itself, because we always respect the body, the dead body, and with uh, the relatives, and we will always respect the religion and culture. 
Alam mo nung pinakita ni Secretary Bello yung mga litrato, hindi mo talagang magagalit ka sa, sa ginawa yan. Na, nakita ko po yun, pinakita ko kay Senator Bato. Talagang magagalit ka. Anyway, uh, nakasuha na ba yung mga recruiters? Kasama ba sa plano ninyong kasuhan yung recruiters o sponsor lang po? Uh, the recruiter is under suspension, Your Honor, pending uh, resol resolution of his case. Kasama ba sila sa kakasuhan kung sakasakali? Uh, depende po po yun, Your Honor. We'll have to study the possibility of including them. Mm. With the indulgence, is there an ongoing investigation with the uh, recruitment agency? Because uh, obviously his <coughs> statements don't... Uh, uh, jive with the uh, information at hand and the Meron, information being given to us investigation ongoing yes, is it ongoing investigation why he is under suspension okay yes uh, senator bongo meron ba tayong uh, sa ngayon uh, total deployment uh, ban na tayo sa, sa Kuwait or yes your honor with some exceptions your honor like uh, ano po yun yung mga skilled workers and professionals with existing contract and categorized as balik manggagawa. In other words, Your Honor... So, yung mga new applicants... Hindi po pwede, Your Honor. Sa ngayon, meron tayong... Uh, total ban po dyan, Total... Uh, is, is it temporary or pending... Ano na pong update sa standard employ, uh, employment contract na plano nyong uh, lagdaan? Yun po ang pag-uusapan namin dito sa February 2 and 3. We are, I'm bringing with me yung technical working group natin, Your Honor, so that they will talk with the technical working group of QIT and hopefully they will agree to, uh, to the harmonized standard employment contract which our president wants to be. Saan nangyari ngayon? Anong sa tingin mo magiging epekto? Anong magiging changes niyo dito sa standard employment ko. Naka, tayo naman, ayaw natin mawala ng uh, trabaho yung ating mga uh, kababayan, lalong-lalo na po yung mga skilled workers. Uh, alam nyo, hindi na babayaran yung lungkot. Mas gusto nila magtrabaho rito. Kaya talagang malaki lang po ang diferensya sa sweldo. Mas malaki yung kinikita natin doon. Hindi natin sila masisisi. Na alam naman nila na merong risk talaga lalong-lalo na yung mga domestic workers natin. Nandiyan dyan yung risk ng pangambuso. Hindi natin may na talagang gusto nilang magtrabaho sa ibang bansa dahil mas malaki yung sweldo. So, sa lalagdaan ninyong standard employment contract, ang uh, tanong po natin, uh, sa tingin nyo ba may iwasan itong mga ganitong uh, pangyayari, mga pangambuso, o protect, yung proteksyon ng ating mga kababayan? Uh, your Honor, uh if they will agree to this harmonized standard employment contract, malaking pag-asa na mabibigyan ng sapat na protection ang ating mga OFW. An ano pong uh, uh, laman o magiging protection natin doon? Unang-una, Your Honor, the provisions which President Duterte wanted to be included in this contract, yung passport at saka cellphone ng OFW dapat hawak nila yung kanilang working hours specified, yung kanilang sleeping hours specified, yung kanilang <coughs> one day week, uh, one day off a week with pay, dapat nandun. At saka, Your Honor, this is very important. They cannot be transferred to another employer without the written consent and the written approval of our labor attorney, Your Honor. These Bakal, are intended. Hindi ba ito natuloy, no? Hindi ba nung <coughs> nagkaroon tayo ng... Uh, MOA ba yan? Yes, Your Honor. We had a MOA and under that MOA, we should have that harmonized employment contract. Hindi, hindi pa natuloy na tayo. Hindi sila pumapayag, Your Honor. Eh. Ito na nga ngayon. This is what we are going to Ito do. Ito yung magiging bargaining ano nyo? Yes, Your Honor. Chief. Because I told them, the ban will stay if Jenelin is not given justice and you will not agree to that harmonized standard employment contract. Plano pa naman ng Pangulo, di ba, pumunta ngayong Marso. So, sa tingin ninyo, malalagdaan itong standard employment contract bago siya pumunta? Your Honor, uh, based on their latest actuation, 
I am, my level of confidence is very high, Your Honor, because in fact yesterday I was informed that the employers have been formally charged with murder. Okay. And in fact, eh, kung paniniwala natin yung... dalawa yung mag-asawa? Apo, yung, ano, yung employers <coughs> po. May we know, may we know where, where, where's the employer now? Is he or she detained? Nakakulong po sila. Nakakulong sila. Yung detention nila yung para sa mga high criminals ang tawag eh. Yung mga high criminals daw sila nakakulong. And is it true that the husband or the wife works for the government of Kuwait? Member of the Ministry of Interior, Your Honor. Okay. I just don't know the rank. Oh, Ministry of Interior. Yes, parang police siya tama. Police officer. Anyway, uh, just 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 to uh, 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 taking off from uh, Senator uh, Bongo's uh, issues on the uh, contract, the reason for being kaya hindi sumasign ang uh, Kuwaiti government is because they're saying they wanted to have a universal contract to all uh, nationalities. No, yun yung ano nila, yun yung defense hu nila, no. But of course, we don't, we don't, we don't believe that. We, we, we wanted, of course, uh, what we are asking for is uh, just basic rights, no? Pagtulog, hawak ang passport, and nangyari kay Jenlyn, pag gusto tawagan ng pamilya, hindi maka, ma, makatawag. And sawang-sawa na ho tayo dun sa istorya na kinukulong uh, sa kwarto, kinukulong sa bahay. And in this committee, uh, parang sana hindi tayo maging kalyo every time we talk about yung kafala system. And we know it's, it's, it's still there. Um, ang question ko, Secretary, meron po bang ibang bansa na sa Kuwait na nakakuha din ng ganitong klase na uh, working contract na arrangement? O wala din po dahil, if you come to think of it, perhaps we're the only or two uh, Asian countries na nagpapadala ng uh, household service worker doon sa Kuwait, if, if I'm not mistaken. Can you clarify that, Secretary? Thank you, Your Honor. Yung last question nyo po, Your Honor, we are only number four in terms of private migrant workers. Ang number one na, na nagpapadala na ay India. Then, we we're talking about household service uh, yes, workers. Your Honor, uh -huh. Yes, Your Honor. India, then Bangladesh, and then I think Nepal. So we are only either, either four or five tayo kasi nandiyan pa po ang Indonesia. So... Ang ano Secretary, wala na ata ang Indonesia. Ang Indonesia ro, UAE lang? O UAE ba lang po sila. Kuwait? Wala sa Kuwait. Hindi uh, ba? Uh, okay. So anyway, Your Honor, yung tungkol sa kuhan, sa kontrata, lahat ng mga countries na yan, naghihintay. Because we will be the first one to achieve this just in case. And the world, the, yung mga uh, migrant sending countries are wanting this because the moment pumayag sila sa atin, then they will all ask for the same contract. This is also happening not only for Filipinos. Yes, you're itong right. Nang, itong, itong mga nangyayari na ito. Ilan Abuse. Ilan talaga yung DH natin sa Kuwait? Pero yung 140, lahat DH, walang professional or skilled. DH lang yung 140. Documented. Pwera pa yung mga hindi documented. Yes, Your Honor. Sa uh, pakiwari ninyo, marami rin doc yung non-documented. Marami rin, marami rin, marami rin, marami rin, Your Honor. Oh, oh, po, Your so, Honor. sa madaling sabi, malaki ang mawawala sa Pilipinas kapag tuloy-tuloy pa ang deployment sa DH, tama po ba? In terms of remittance po, ma malaki ang mawawala po. Although, is Ang pinakamalaking contributor naman sa dollar remittance ay yung mga seafarers, Your Honor. Mm. Oo, di hamak na seafarers naman ang talagang nagbibigay. Yung DH, kung uh, ikukumpara eh, sa pinsala at panganib na hinaharap nila dun sa ibang bansa, lalo na sa Kuwait, na paulit-ulit na itong mga incidenting to, siguro kailangan isipin na natin kung ano ang uh, ipapalit natin kapag tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung ban. Mr. Chair, uh, yeah, just 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 one 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 thing that I'd like to raise, Secretary. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but uh, some of our colleagues here, me and Senator Aimee, were, were were talking a while ago about uh, our strong reservation in uh, deploying household service workers. Uh, not, not not only because of what had happened in the past. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's going to work. If even uh, they agree to our. Uh, 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 unified uh, working contract. 
but perhaps because of the Kafala system. If you look at the MOU, which was signed in May of 2018, after the signing ng MOU, I was looking at the figures of uh, welfare cases. I think it was provided by uh, OWA, thank you. Um, it dramatically dropped from 2016, 17, and then 18 from 6,000 plus na welfare cases, it dropped to about 1,000 something welfare cases, which is, yeah, the, the, that's the figure. So I'm correct, 6,800 to 1,680. But still, uh, nakatulong talaga, malaki po yung tulong ng MOU. Uh, klaro po yun eh, na, na malaking tulong. But the 1,683 is still there. You have rape cases, 23 rape, rape cases, nitong January to November of 2019. Nang galing po yan sa 65 at 60. So ang, ang, ang sa akin lang, Secretary, and I think Senator Aimee also uh, uh, told me about her, her, her sentiments about this. Yung pagpapadala ng household service uh, workers, baka talagang dapat pag-aralan po nating maigi. Kahit na mapirmahan pa itong uh, 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 unified uh, standard contract that uh, we are pushing. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. In fact, Your Honor, as early as <coughs> November last year, I already issued a, an administrative order ordering a scaling down of the deployment of our household service workers. Nag-react nga dyan ang uh, Saudi Arabia, Your Honor. Eh. Pero sabi ko naman sa kanila, eh, alam nyo nga ako, 9,000 of our workers have a collectible of 4.5 billion. Hindi nyo binabayaran yan, dalawang taon na nang ako kayo, sabi ko. So you better pay or we go down more. Go or at least look for other countries who would uh, respect our basic human rights. I, Mr. Chair. I agree, Your Honor. In fact, we are uh, going in a possible bilateral agreement with Canada. And then just recently, we heard that Croatia, Croatia is also interested to hire. Uh, we are putting up a labor office in uh, Czechoslovakia, Your Honor. And then we are... Uh, uh, focusing on Japan, where uh, the record is very good as far as our OFW. Thank you, Secretary. Yes, yes uh, Mr. Senator Mr. Nancy. Mr. Chair, just, siguro, just to add dun sa nire-raise mong point about itong pagdadala, pagpapadala natin ng mga domestic helpers. Meron ho ba tayong interagency kung saan nandun yung NEDA, I don't know, DBM, um, and other concerned agencies as a long-term plan na Parang may exit plan tayo na, I mean, hindi naman pwede forever and ever tayo nagpapadala ng domestic helpers. Because on, sa akin, kahit magtayo pa tayo ng Department of uh, OFW, for as long as we send domestic helpers, we will always have this problem. Uh, alam niyo naman ho, when my father was the vice president, he was uh, the presidential advisor for OFW. At nakasama naman ho ako sa kanya nag -ikot. at marami rin ho ako napuntahan na, na iba't ibang polo centers. At makikita ho natin, Mr. Chair, dun sa mga polo centers natin, ang nandun talaga, ito yung mga domestic helpers at hindi naman yung skilled workers natin. Kaya for sa akin, kahit may ganito pa kayong piece of document for as long as we can't, um, kasi hindi naman natin bansa yun eh, hindi natin talaga... 100% pwedeng implement. Wala ho ba tayong ganun na time frame na, kunwari, in 15 years, wala na tayong domestic helper. I mean, if Indonesia was able to do it, why can't we do it? Uh, na, yun na nga, katulad, at least, naumpisan nyo ho na nag-scale down na nga tayo, but siguro nga, um, for a 10-year plan, na pagdating dun sa 10th year, zero na ta talaga yung... Uh, pag-deploy natin for domestic helpers kasi either we've created uh, better better jobs dito sa Pilipinas at yun din nga sa ko, Mr. Chair, hindi ako naniniwala na mas malaki yung kikitain nila sa um, Kuwait. For example, magkano ho ba nakukuha ng ano? $400 a day. So in a month, magkano? $400 a month, magkano yung $400? 20, eh, dito na lang ho, di ba, pag, di ba, ang daming uh, rape, nare-rape, naaabuso, eh, ngayon ho, dito, ang, ang daming naghahanap ng uh, uh, household helpers na 
tingin ko baka pwede taas na, na natin yung minimum for kasambahay or baka dito may skill na rin. Pag ganito yung skill ng isang kasambahay, may equivalent na uh, remuneration yung pag ganong skilled na household helpers, which I think hindi po na-explore yung ng Dolly for, for the Philippines. Baka maganda nga ho, pag-aralan yun. Katulad na nabanggit ni Chair, baka magandang tanongin yung NEDA kung meron tayong, kung may ambisyon 2040, hindi ho ba kasama dun sa ambisyon na wala na tayong domestic helpers na ipapadala sa ibang bansa? Sige yun. Actually, your honor, that is the dream of our president. That is why he went into this build, build, build infrastructure program. That is a program that is intended to create employment in our country para yung ating mga kababayan nung hindi na nangangailangan ng mga ibang bansa pa. But in the meantime, while we are trying to create the employment uh, opportunities, we really have to see to it that our workers to whom we deploy will be sufficiently and strictly protected, Your Honor. Pero yun ang final goal ng ating Pangulo eh. Pauwiin sila because the President and I think all of us are aware of the social implication kapag yung isang nanay o isang tatay ay nawawala. Na, na, anong tawag ni Pangulong Duterte? Yung, ah, yung ano? Social cost. Dysfunctional yung mga pamilya. Yung mga pamilya. And siguro mag Secretary, tignan natin kung anong ginawa ng Indonesia bago nila ginawa itong total deployment, kung paano nila pinaghandaan yung ganong scenario para sa kanila. It's good, uh, this is a good time also to, to recognize uh, Yusek uh, Edelon from uh, NEDA uh, to give us a, 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 a report, uh, perhaps information that would uh, uh, give us an idea of uh, the direct and indirect uh, economic impact of uh, uh, even with the escalation of uh, tensions uh, in the uh, Middle East. Ma'am, you have the floor. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. But uh, first to address the question of, uh, of uh, Senator uh, Binay, kung, kung merong interagency. Actually, there is a subcommittee on international migration and development under the NEDA, NEDA Board Social Development Committee. So, kasama dito ang DOLE, kasama namin ang OWA, ang POEA, ang DFA is also included there. Tapos kami, DSWD is also included. So, um, in, the, uh, in the current PDP that we have, uh, yung migration and development, that's always how we frame it. Migration and development is actually mainstreamed in 9 of 15 chapters. Now, as we are updating the PDP, nagkaroon ng realization na kailangan meron talagang sariling chapter, i-call out na. The idea before kasi is uh, this uh, concern on migration and development has to be mainstreamed in all agencies of government. So kunwari kung DA, DOJ, meron point person or unit to, do, to deal with the migration and development. Kung halimbawa naman sa education and so on and so forth. But right now, uh, we are actually finalizing the um, yung chapter 21, which is really to ensure safe, orderly, and regular uh, migration. Kasama na yung mainstreaming into development. Kasi we recognize that an OFW is simultaneously no, a person who is working abroad with uh, an employer na different ang kanyang nationality, different culture, etc. It's residing also abroad under uh, a different political jurisdiction it's also interacting with several other nationalities na iba-iba yung kultura, iba-iba yung religion, and yet meron siyang family na naiwanan dito. So yun yung, ano, yun yung tinignan namin na parang holistic na pagtingin sa OFW. And so kailangan talaga pre-departure, departure, yung mga concerns niya from pre-departure, departure, nang nandun siya, tsaka yung mga family niya na nandito, and then yung uh, uh, the eventual reintegration. Ang isang nakikita namin na uh, major gap natin in terms of programs and probably also policies really has to do with the integration part. Doon tayo medyo, ano, medyo mahina. Um, Reintegration. Um, and with that, for example, how many jobs are being filled uh, uh, by former OFWs? Do we have a data on this? Yung bumalik po rito, gusto nila magtrabaho ulit. Namomonitor ho ba natin yun? I don't know if uh, POEA or, or DOLE, uh, do you have a... Uh, yeah, actually, 
That is also correct. <laughs> That's correct. Actually, but it's very lousy <laughs> data. I, I'll go to that later. We I, have, I have a we have actually come up with an almanac. We, this was in two years uh, ago. Siguro we can have uh, uh, either we can we can submit again. You agree with the data is very lousy. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Pero we are actually uh, doing something about it. One is uh, meron ng ginawa na National Migration Survey. So this was done in 2018 and we're just uh, getting the um, initial results. Naka-embargo pa lang yung results. No? Uh, but what we have seen there is uh, uh, it confirms some of the data that we already know. On a regular basis, merong survey on overseas Filipinos na ginagawa ang NSO. But this is uh, ang PSA. But this is just a rider to the LFS, to the October round of the LFS. So, ang usual concern natin is, uh, so, magkano yung nagiging remittances? Eh, para masyadong remittance conscious to. But the National Migration Survey is more uh, concerned about, the, you know, the well-being. Uh, 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 uh. So, it also has uh, more samples, 45,000. Uh, as soon as we get the, the data, bubusisiin pa namin. But roughly, Ang isa ring nakita namin dito is uh, yung sinasabi na nga na uh, yung sa ito, no uniform contract no um, the benefits provided by employers during the first job abroad only 70 per 76% were given housing lodging 70% uh, food allowance only 53% were given health insurance or medical allowance so this is a concern as well so Pero you food service workers yeah. so, naka ano ba yan naka Lahat, 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 na lahat na? Pag, pero pag nakuha namin yung data, pwede namin mahimay na. So, yung so sa, sa, sa household siya, service dito. workers, ma'am, baka pwede makahingi kami yung data doon. Kasi uh, we're, we're really concerned about, about, about our household service workers. I granting na ibigay pa rin yung uh, uh, unified contract, I, I still have strong reservations. Yeah. Pero you, you said, as a policy, hindi pa na tatalakay nga ng NENDA. Yung scenario na exit plan natin for domestic workers? Actually, yun ang pangarap namin, no? <laughs> uh, in the ambition, when we asked them, how, uh, would you rather work here or abroad, 88% said that they would rather work here. 88%. Uh, so 12% yung ano. But not necessarily domestic yan, ha? Not necessarily. It's uh, all. Yes, correct. It's, all. Uh, it's the whole universe. Correct. Uh, and then when we asked them, uh, suppose you will be given, you know, the same salary as you would receive abroad, would you still work abroad or here? So of the 12%, merong 40% that said that they will still work abroad. So meron pa rin talaga na ano, mag-work mag abroad as a matter of choice. Mga adventure, mga ano, sige, ganyan. Sige, sige, Isaac. Baka, Mr. Chair, baka pwede for the next year's budget. Baka maganda, umpisahan na natin yung ganitong pag-aaral na parang exit. I mean, domestic, yung domestic workers lang naman natin as a part of ambition na I know, 10 years, 20 years from now, or 15 years, hindi na talaga tayo magpapadala ng domestic helper. You also agree Tama. with that, no? That's, that's, uh, that's what you said. That's also part of your dream. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's also part of the dream of <laughs> some okay. vision, yung matatag, yes. matatag na familia, yes. that the yes, family uh, lives together. But, you know, it has to start somewhere, di ba? Um, and we need to take that first step. Eh, yun yung pinakamahirap palagi, eh, that first step. First step. So maganda siguro, baka we can convene itong interagency na to at talagang pag-aralan natin kung paano natin mapupuntahan itong ganitong klaseng panaginip, di ba? Okay, sige po. Uh, at this juncture, can we just give the floor to uh, Ms. Susan uh, Ople? Uh, Ma'am, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, to all our distinguished senators. Um, just four quick points po. Una, um, Failure to monitor. If the agency had only had only um, spoken or written, or uh, if they wrote the labor attaché, na they had this complaint, na hindi na makausap si Jenaline, the labor attaché could have asked the foreign recruitment agency, I present you sa amin, ask the em ask the employer to come and see us. Pwede po yun. but sinarili po nila and. Um, he relied basically based on his own testimony he only relied on the secretary of the foreign recruitment agency so kung hindi na po nakokontact from um october to december and then december 13 
yung employer na ang, ang sumasagot, hindi na yung worker, dun pa lang po dapat sana talaga yung labor attache was notified. So, sa tingin ko po, it's not just a recruitment violation, but it was really neglect of the worker. Um, pangalawa po, which brings me to the second point, is POEA also monitoring, baka some recruitment agencies are really deploying more then they can monitor. So, ano po yung monitoring mechanisms? Iba-iba po ba yan? Meron po ba tayong parang gold uh, benchmarking? Or should uh, there ano? be a ceiling? Opo, oh. parang um, ano, ano yung difference ng isang ethical recruitment agency in terms of monitoring capabilities as against yung hindi masyadong ethical and how can uh, a job applicant find out the difference? Um, pangatlo po, yung standard contract or unified contract. I'm, I'm sorry, but based on my experience po, 15 years na po yung Ople Center, the most heartbreaking cases we've handled has always been from Kuwait. So it's either po tayo ang magbago, na tayo na ang tumanggi, or hihintayin natin na magmature sila and yung konsepto ng human rights ay matanggap ng puso nila. Kasi po, remember, prior to this, there was a rape case sa airport mismo. Security personnel din ang involved. And hindi nga natin alam kung naparusahan yun o nafaila ng case yun. Na, na wala. Sabi ni Yusek Sara, walang case na nafile. Pero yung mapagdating pa lang sa airport, kinuha na. Ni rape na. Police din yun. Ngayon, member ng Ministry of Interior, Ito yung na, na, kung mismong government personnel nila walang konsepto ng human rights, how can a contract amendment or contract modification correct that? It's deeper than just um, labor standards. No? Um, yung sa amin din po, it's all about values. So it's either mag... mag Ano sila ng values, reorient, or tayo naman, let us insist on our own values and that these are the values that are there to protect our workers. Apangatlo po, we ask that the POEA also look into a differentiation of rules. Pag skilled workers, iba ang rules. Pag uh, domestic workers, uh, deploying agencies, iba po ang rules. Mas mahigpit po dapat. And merong elaborate monitoring system to monitor how they monitor our workers. Kasi they are all required to submit reports. Pero sino po ba talaga nagsasala sa mga reports na yun? Baka compliance lang siya and then pag may pumutok sa media, o balikan natin, ni report ba kung talagang nanghihingi ng tulong yung pamilya. So there's so much room for reform. And um, yung pong ano, la laging lumalabas yung... Uh, uh, and dami ring undocumented workers, although hindi na po ito masyadong connected sa Kuwait. We, we uh, the OPLE Center would like to recommend to our legislators, we need uh, amendments to the um, Migrant Workers Act and also to the Anti-Trafficking Act, wherein, pag Pinoy po yung recruiter or human trafficker, it shouldn't matter kung hindi nila sa Pilipinas ni recruit. Ngayon po kasi, may case kami na na-dismiss sa court, dahil ang sabi sa amin, eh, hindi kasi dito nangyari yung recruitment, eh, sa ibang bansa. Yung gusto po sana namin, may batas na kahit po sa Dubai sila ni-recruit at napahamak sila sa Iraq, pwede pa rin habulin dahil may extraterritoriality provision. Um, and then, last na lang po, dun sa um, NCOV kanina, Meron din pong pakiusap yung mga medical workers natin na nasa front lines. They would also, and sana matake up sa interagency, they would also like to seek guidance from the government as to the protocols. Kung sila po, parang noon nung sa SARS, sa Saudi Arabia, sila ang nakasalang. Um, and and uh, eto po, ibang klasing virus naman ito, mas matindi yata. So, wha what happens if they want to refuse? If they, if they were... Uh, if they, if their hospital, especially kung government hospital yun, would like the Filipino medical workers to be assigned 
dito sa ward na puro ano, can they refuse? Uh, anong, anong protocols, anong guidelines po ang pwedeng, ano, and baka po ang niisip din nila, baka naman if they refuse to be assigned there, sila naman ang uh, uh, tatanggalin sila or they will be bit demoted or pahihirapan sila nung, nung peers nila. So, Chair, yung so, point lang dun sa can they refuse? Can they refuse? Eh, yun yung trabaho nila is to save lives. Diba? Kasi, Lalo na itong mga medical practitioners. I mean, that's their job. Kasi may iba pong levels. Hindi lang po yung mga doctors, nurses. Meron, minsan po rin kasi, um, yung pinaka-foreign... <laughs> Yung mga nurse, parang malabo yeah. ata kung magre-refuse, di ba? Yun. Sana po masama lang sa kung ano man yung advice mabibigay. Thank you po. Si Dr. Uh, Umandap, can we uh, recognize him? Para ma... And uh, just try to limit lang ho sana para makadami po tayo. Thank you, sir. You're recognized. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, ako po yung OFW from Kuwait since 1993. Kaya kanina, um, while we are... Uh, Yung we appreciate yung ginagawang hakbang ng ating uh, mabuting uh, secretary. Pero ang sa amin po kasi ay uh, siguro dapat tignan po natin ano ba pinagmumulan ng itong problema natin sa Kuwait. Alam nyo, noong 1990s, hindi naman nagiging ganyan yung problema. Eh. Wala namang patayan. So, pero, kaya uh, since 1994, community leader na po ako sa Kuwait. Eh. Now, ano ba ang pinagmumulan po nito? Kakaiba po ang problema ng Kuwait, masyado pong complex. Pero ang mas malimit na pinagmumulan po dito kasi ay yung insecurities o yung pagsaselos ng mga babaeng Kuwaiti. Noong 1990 po kasi nagsimula na ang mga Kuwaiti na nagkakaroon ng asawang Pilipina. So yung mga Kuwaiti na po, uh, yung mga Kuwaiti, mga nakakapag-asawa ng Pilipina, mas gumaganda po yung buhay nila kasi. Gumaganda ang buhay nila dahil nakakapagpaaral pa sila ng mga anak nila, gumaganda ang negosyo. Ito po ang nagiging reason kung bakit ang mga babaeng kwetiya kapag ka nagkakaroon ng kasambahay na babae ay sobrang selos. Kung mababalitaan nyo po, ang laging involved po sa pananakit ng mga, ba ng mga kasambahay, hindi po yung lalaki. Napakalaki po nila. Kaya nilang gumulpe ng isang beses lang at hindi na nila ulitin sapat na yon. Pero ang mga babae, paulit-ulit nilang gagawin yan dahil sa matinding selos. Kung nabalitaan nyo po, nagkaroon din po ng kaso na ang, mga, ang isang Pilipina po natin ay pinutul, pinutul po yung kanyang labi ng nail cutter. Pinagputol-putol yung nail ng ano, ewan ko kung nakarating po dito yung balita na yun. Yung, yung lahat ng lobby na yan, nilagyan, pinutol ng nail cutter. Yung buhok, ginupit na parang akala mo, lukalukang yung Pilipina na pinagputol-putol yung ano. Bakit? Kasi sa sobrang selos niya, na baka mamaya maagawan siya ng kanyang asawa, ang ginagawa po nila ay uh, sina, uh, binamaltrato nila ang, kanila, ang ating mga kasambahay. Minsan nga nagkaroon po ng meeting ng mga stakeholders with Secretary Bellio. Kaya ayun talagang, ang sinabi ni Secretary Bellio doon sa mga uh, 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 PRA, yung mga Philippine Recruitment Agencies, tsaka yung mga uh, uh, NGO, sabi niya, wag na kayo magpadala ng magaganda at yung mga bata. Nagtawanan yung mga ano, nagtawanan yung mga ibang stakeholders. Pero ang totoo, tama po siya. Nagiging, uh, nagiging masyadong ano po ang ating mga, kas ang mga kasambahay tulad si Jeneline. Kapag ka nakita po ninyo, ngayon, pag nakita niyo yung mukha niya, nakita ko po siya, nakipaglibing po kami doon, pumunta kami ng Cotabato. Ibang-iba sa itsura niya. Pero matitrace niyo po yung ganda niya sa mga kapatid niya at sa nanay niya. Napaka maganda yung bata. At posibleng ito ay nagmula dahil sa pag matinding pagsaselos ng, ng asawa ng Kuwaiti. Isa pa, uh, Mr. Chair, dagdag ko lang. Isa sa nagiging uh, problema ng uh, mga kasambahay natin ay yung masyadong commercialized na po ang pagre-recruit. Uh, pasensya na po sa mga recruitment agents na nandito. Para makakuha ka ang isang kuwaiti ng isang employer at uh, ng isang uh, uh, kasambahay, kinakailangan niyang magbayad ng, mahig ng 2,000 dinars o mahigit uh, uh, 330,000. 1,952,000. Yan yung latest na sinabi po sa akin. Anyway. So that's how much in pesos again? About 334,000. Pero sabi nila medyo may baba. Hindi, hindi po. We'll, 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 we'll let you talk. We, oh, yeah. Please. Now, ngayon, ang mangyayari po ngayon dun kasi, kapag ka po masyadong malaki, alam niyo po, hindi po lahat ng Kuwaiti ay mayayaman. Kami, tulad ako, nagtatrabaho sa Ministry of Health, yung mga Kuwaiti kasama namin, halos nagiging ka-level lang po namin ang, ang, ang sweldo nila eh. Pagka dinagdag yung mga overtimes namin ngayon, 
Kapag ka dumastos po kasi sila ng ganong kalaking halaga, ang tingin po nila sa kasambahay natin, nabayar, nabayaran na nila yung kasambahay natin. Ang unang nagiging problema kagad, pagdating na pagdating ng worker, hindi, na, hindi pinapasuelduhan. Dahil ang tingin nila, yung first three months niyan, parang gusto nilang bumawi muna dahil ang laki ng ginasos nila. So, oras na hindi po nakasweldo ang ating worker, automatic po kagad yun. Sasama ng loob, magiging hindi na maganda ang pagkatrabaho niya. Bandang huli, may sakita na sila. Doon po yung pinagmumulan po ng uh, isa sa mga problema, yung mga problema. Ang isa pa, Mr. Chair, dagdag ko lang, yung local, yung, yung batas nila, gusto ko kinakailangan kasi dito ay monitoring ng kasambahay. Pero hindi po allowed kasi ang mga recruitment agency, mga secretaries, mga representative na pumunta doon sa loob ng bahay. Hindi po nila ma-check po 'yan. Hindi rin po po pwedeng uh, mag-blacklisting ang mga ang mga foreign recruitment agency dahil irereklamo po sila kapag halimbawa mayroong isang uh, 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 employer na uh, nanakit, nagkaroon ng history hindi po nila po pwedeng tanggihin niya at irereklamo din po sila dyan. Siguro ito ay sa, sa mga dapat na, na i-consider po, hindi lamang ito usapin ng kontrata, hindi lamang po ito usapin ng kapala system. Meron pong pinagmumulan, may pinaguhugutan po ang problema ng Kuwait. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mandap. We give the floor to uh, President of CLADS, uh, Ms. Hermonia, uh, please. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. May, may I request to be recognized? Una-una po, hindi po totoo yung sinasabi mo na 300,000 na 300, yung ginagastos ng employer. If you live in Kuwait for more than 30 years as an advocate ng OFW, alam mo po ang katotohanan kung magkano lang binabayaran ng employer. So, with regards po dun sa kung kailan po ba tayo... Which is talaga, how much? Sorry ma'am, which is how much daw po? Sa ngayon po, alam mo po yan, nasa batas ng Kuwait, it's 990 KD. Hindi ko po alam po sa mukino yung figure na yon o nang huhula ka lang. Okay? So how much is that? 990 KD po. 90 that KD. is around, around uh, 3,300 US dollar po. It's about 150, 170,000. Yes, but 000. not 350,000. Okay. Tungkol po sa sinasabi ninyo na kailan po kaya tayo mag-exit dito po sa deployment ng HSW. Kami din po sa uh, bilang stakeholder Uh, gusto na po namin mag-raise full exit dito. Kaya lang po, ako po 35 years na sa recruitment industry. Kahit po ayaw namin silang tanggapin, kung makikita niyo po sa talaan ng, ng mga uh, nag-a-abroad na domestic helper, elementary po sila and high school level lang, yung pong job matching nila. Kahit po gusto namin silang dalhin sa mga emerging market, Canada, Australia, sa Japan, hindi po sila mafit-fit. Pangalawa po, sinasabi nyo yung sa, sa Indonesia. At tama po yun. Ang Indonesia, nakakonsentrate po sila sa Asian country. Nag-graceful exit po sila sa Middle East. Alam nyo po kung bakit? Kasi po dito, kami po na recruitment agency, masyado po kami nakatali sa rules and policy. Lalo na po sa Migrants uh, Workers Act yung RA 10002. Meron po kasing bansa, yung mga ay meron po kasing batas, yung mga receiving country na hindi po po pwede sa atin. So, kaya po instead na magdala po kami doon katulad po sa Taiwan, ang nandiyan po Indonesia, yung caretaker nila. Indonesia po ang karamihan nandoon. Halos tayo po nasa 5%. Ganon din po sa Hong Kong, karamihan po doon Indonesia, Vietnamese, sa Singapore, sa Malaysia. Kasi po, doon sa mga bansa na yun, meron po silang batas tungkol po sa placement fee na hindi po po pwede sa atin. Kasi po, generalized po yung ating batas na no placement fee sa domestic worker. Ang pumapayag lang so, ang po... gusto nyo, uh, singilin pa ng placement fee, itong binabanggit nyo nakakaawa na at... Uh... Wala nang Hindi naman pambayad. po, uh, Your Honor, kaya po namin pinapaliwanag. Kasi po, bakit po sila doon nagdi-deploy? Kasi po, yung gobyerno nila, pumapayag po doon sa batas ng receiving country. Hindi ko po sinasabi na sana mag-placement fee din kayo. Ano po yung particular that you, you wanted to, to, to raise? Na? Sana po, uh, ma-revisit po yung RA 10 
na masyado po talaga yung uh, nakakamatay sa katulad naming stakeholders. Tingnan niyo po sa bansa ng United Arab Emirates. Naka naka-hold po doon ang deployment ng HSW sa kadahilan na hindi po magkasundo ang Sige Philippine po, government Ma'am, siguro tayo. bigyan nyo na lang kami ng position paper nyo tungkol doon. What particular provision that you wanted to yes. uh, raise para lang maka-ano din po tayo? And siguro, Mr. Chair, baka you can submit to the committee. Ano ba yung pagkakaiba natin sa Indonesia, sa Vietnam, pagdating doon sa polisiya nga ng pagpapadala ng Domestic helpers. Uh, Mister, Kay, pag-submit na lang ho kayo siguro Mister sa komisyon. Chair, pwede pa pong mag-add ng isa lang. Alam niyo po, karamihan po talaga na napupunta sa Middle East, elementary, saka high school level. Yung equipping po po talaga, kulang pa. Kaya yung po yung sinusolusyon na namin. So, alam niyo po, kahit po mag-promote pa kami ng recruitment, kung mayroon po silang employment opportunities po dito, hindi na po yan aalis. Kaya po yan nagpupunta pa kasi wala po talaga silang mapagtrabahuhan dito. Ma'am, I just have one question. No? Magkano po yung service fees kung Kuwait, sa Kuwait, uh, sa mga uh, uh, household service workers po? Magka magkano po yung service fee uh, sa kanila? Yung pong nire-remit po sa amin? Hindi po, yung service fee po. Ay, uh, yung pong uh, binabayad ng isang employer to hire the HSW po, 990 dinar po. That is around 3,200 US dollar. Hindi po totoo yung sinasabi okay, niya okay po. na 7,000. Uh -huh. Ngayon po, kumpara po natin sa ibang bansa, for example, uh, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, magkano po yung uh, service fees doon? Wala po silang ibinibigay na service fee eh. Ticket lang po. Kasi po, Uh, meron po silang uh, batas po kasi doon na in every year of contract sa Ministry of Manpower. So wala po? Wala po. Mm. Even po sa And doon po, po sa mga binanggit ko na yun, mas safe po sila doon. Yes, kaya lang po, meron po pumapayag, katulad po sa bansa ng Indonesia. Mismo po yung Ministry of Labor ng Indonesia nakipag-arrange po sa mga banko na na tungkol po doon sa loan, sa babayaran ng workers nila. Kaya po sila ang nandun. Dito po sa atin kasi hindi pwede. Hindi ko naman po sinasabi na dapat uh, maningil kami. So, yun lang po ba yung sa pag-aaral po na makita po natin bakit doon na pupunta. Thank you po. Thank you. And we give the floor Mr. to... Mr. Uh, Chair, make clear lang po ako. I, I just want to clarify that. Please. Uh, I stand corrected uh, doon sa, sa figure na nabanggit. Uh, it's not about... It's not 2,000 KD. It's 2,000 dollars. Uh, 1,852 uh, to 2,000 dollars yung remittance uh, ng agency. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ang, ang point ko lang kasi doon sa Kuwait ang taas. Doon sa Malaysia, for example, Singapore, halos wala. No? And... Uh, Don't must save sila. Can I just give the floor to uh, Mr. Hernando, uh, the Vice Chair of uh, Migrante International? And again, uh, lahat po kayo ay uh, pinakikiusapan natin na magbigay ng, uh, ng uh, position paper tungkol po dito sa mga pinag-uusapan po natin. Yes, uh, Mr. Hernando, you're recognized. Salamat po sa pagkakataon, Mr. Chair, sa mga kagalang-galang po nating Senador. Uh, kami po sa Migrante International may nais po sanang uh, hilingin sa Senado tungkol po sa mga kababayan nating domestic worker, primarily po sa paghanap po ng hostesya para sa kanila, ayaw po namin na yung kaso po ni Gideline ay magaya po doon sa mga naunang mga kaso ng mga OFWs. Si Constantia Dayag po, kami rin po ay nilapitan ng pamilya. Ngayon po, pagkatap maganda po mag mahingi po yung update mula kay Secretary Bello kasi noong unang na narinig po natin yung kaso, mainit po yung pagsuporta ng gobyerno tungkol dyan paghanap ng hustisya. Pero po nitong huli, nag, masama po yung loob ng pamilya ni na Constantia Dayag dahil po hanggang ngayon ay hindi po naitutulak yung kaso. Ganon din po yung kaso ni Mary Jean Alberto, yung OFW po na nahulog sa 13th floor noong December. Uh, dito po din namin nakita kung paano rin po nagkaroon ng pag-iba ng trato kapag ka po ang isang OFW ay hindi documented. Uh, yung, o, yung mga yung pamilya po ng OFWs ay nanghingi po na suporta, particular po sa OWA, pero hindi po sila nabigyan ng kanilang mga pangangailangan, katulad ng mga do documented o ng mga kababayan pa nating nagtatrabaho. Ang gusto po na sa amin naming uh, hilingin ay 
Sana po bilang gobyerno, hindi po tayo nagbibigay ng pagtatangi kung sino yung ating mga kababayan tinutulungan, documented man o undocumented. Sa kaso po nila Constancia Dayag, Mary Jean Alberto at ngayon po ni Jeanine Villabende, hinihiling ko po sa ating mga ahensya ng gobyerno, sana po at babantayan rin po ng migrante ang mga kaso na ito, sana po talaga ay mapagtulungan natin makamit yung hustisya para sa kanila. Dugtong po doon sa usapin ng mga recruitment agency po, ang malaki po yung uh, hiling po namin sa Senado na tignan po at repasuhin yung patakaran ng private sector participation sa Overs Employment Program. Ang hinihiling po namin, matagal na po yung uh, labor export o OEP, eh, 40 years na po yan. Paano po pinangunahan ng gobyerno yung implementation yan at nasa na po ba yung gobyerno at bakit tila, no? nasa kamay pa rin ang monitoring primarily ng mga recruitment agency. Gusto po namin tignan yung regulation po ng gobyerno dyan, particular po sa mabilis na repatriation at pag-iimbestiga sa mga kaso ng mga violations. At panghuli po, sir, uh, hinihiling po namin yung usapin po nung sa deployment. Kami po sa migrante, ayaw po namin ng labor export, ayaw po namin na nagde-deploy tayo sa bansa na inaalipin po yung ating kababayan. Kung may deployment ban po, sana po nagkakaroon din tayo ng pagtingin anong mga bansa yung hindi compliant sa mga international human rights instruments na dapat tinatamasan nating mga manggagawa at kung hindi sila nagko-comply doon, eh bakit po tayo magde-deploy? Panghuli po sa usapin po ng exit plan, hindi po umaakma sa mga OFWs yung kasalukuyang infrastructure program ng mga OFWs. Kaya po marami po sa mga OFWs ay ayaw pong umuwi dito sa Pilipinas. Ang kahilingan po namin, sana po i-consider yung binabanggit po ni Ma'am kanina. Sila po yung mga unskilled. Sana ang ating uh, uh, reintegration program ay nakabatay din sa ano yung kakayahan at paano natin i-develop yung ating manpower. Sa halip po na mas maraming mga infrastruktura, ay hinihiling din po namin ay yung mga social infrastructure kung saan po may employ yung ating mga kababaihang mga manggagawa at matuturuan bilang mga social workers, teachers at iba pa. At panghuli na po, uh, Mr. Chair, po. gusto ko pong erase yung usapin po din ng uh, reintegration at social security ng mga OFWs. Pinakamainit po kasi nire-raise po nila ngayon. Pag uwi po nila dito sa Pilipinas, Mr. Chair, ay nakakatanggap po yung isang retiree ng OFW kung oh, awabe. O one member po sila, ay minimum po ay 941 pesos bilang rebate dun sa kanilang contribution sa OWA. Napakaliit po na halaga nito sa mahabang panahon po nilang pagtatrabaho at pag uwi po nila rito ay wala po sila natatanggap na mas, mas substantial na tulong po sa gobyerno. Kaya po nakakaawa din po yung mga matatanda po nating mga OFWs sa kalagayan po ng ating overseas employment program ngayon. Yun lang Thank po, you. Mr. Chair. Maraming, maraming salamat po. Uh, 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 sige, uh, uh, we give the floor to uh, admin. Siguro, siguro uh, tinetesting ng taga-migrante yung reaction ko kasi <laughs> hindi ko naman nakita yung anino ni Mr. Hernando dahil kilala ko po ng personal yung tatlong pamilya nung binanggit niya mga kaso. At uh, hindi ko naman nakita yung anino niya nung uh, nagdudusa at nagdadalamhati yung tatlong pamilya at nandun doon po kami. At tinulungan po namin lahat ng mga pamilya na yon Kung meron pa silang gustong tulong na ibigay ng OWA ay willing din po kaming ibigay. No? Meron na hong mga packages of assistance, Mr. Chair, that we can provide. Uh, Doon naman ho sa rebate program, uh, the rebate program is not a re retirement program. In fact, the OWA uh, is a welfare agency. We are not a retirement agency. That realm belongs to institutions like the SSS. At nagpasangahaw kayo ng batas na required na ang SSS payments for OFWs. So, we are in the area of welfare, as that term implies. Yung rebate is for long-standing OFWs. Hindi po yan retirement program. Uh, ito po ay batay sa actuarial study na iniutos nyo rin nung pinasa nyo yung batas na kailangan may actuarial study. 2 million OFWs po ang entitled dito. Kaya't sabi ng aktuaryo, kung sasagarin natin ang bigay ng rebate, tataubho ang 19.6 billion peso fund. Kaya po ang sa atin, kailangan sustainable yung ibibigay. Kasi in the next four years, may papasok naman ho na 3 million na entitled sa rebate. So we have to be uh, at a level na sustainable dahil in the future, dodoble pa ho yung bibigyan na, binibigyan natin ng rebate ngayon. Sa ngayon po, around 100 million na ang naigugol natin. 
at around 50 to 60,000 na ang nakikinabang dito sa rebate program na ito. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, you want the chairperson of APA say or you wanted to submit your uh, position on this? Yes, actually we have already submitted our position paper, I think, to all the senators. But we also would like to reiterate that we are agreeable to the ban, except that we are worried about our uh, skilled and professional workers that have lost their employment. Maybe after we have studied everything and uh, considered uh, the skilled and professionals to be able to be deployed because they are um, earning very good money and they are being treated well. So probably we can leave the, it for the skilled and professionals after we have thoroughly studied what we are going to do with the domestic helper sector, which we believe also maybe we can train them more and maybe if not in, du in Kuwait, because we cannot totally erase that sector. So probably we can put them in other countries. Like in Europe, they pay 1,200 euro for uh, a domestic helper. Five days work, two days off, and they have to have a private room for themselves only. Maybe if we could more or less market that. No abuse, no nothing. They're afraid of the government. Maybe it would be better for our OFW, for our Chair, household oh, workers. Siguro, isang tanong lang ako. Yung na-mention niyo yung, um, di ba may deployment ban for the new skilled, mga Apo. ilan ho ba itong naapektuhan? Marami na rin po. We have a lot of members that have come forward and asked us to more or less uh, talk to POEA about the other uh, skilled May number ho ba kayo for the skilled? Kasi uh, yung binigay ho ng POEA is the total eh, yung 10,000. But... For skilled, ilan ho? For skilled, more or less, siguro ho, mga, I would say, mga pay. Uh, I mean, 3,000 3, workers. 3,000 so. workers. Siguro, we'll ask Around POEA na lang if you could give us a breakdown, no? Hi, and uh, thank you, ma'am. You're, you're yeah. done, no, ma'am? Uh, just to point out, because a lot of uh, uh, spectators sa atin, no? Especially yung sa media, sa, sa, sa Facebook. Gusto ko lang balikan yung binanggit ni uh, Dr. Umandap na and I think it's out of line na sabihin na huwag na tayong magpapadala ng maganda at uh, hindi bata. No? Uh, sa akin lang po, uh, I think uh, generally, uh, narinig natin yung maraming, uh, maraming uh, nagsalita po dito. And uh, Secretary Bellio himself, when he said it, it's uh, in jest. No? Uh, generally, we should not uh, uh, send our HSW dun sa mga bansa na na dangerous at uh, hindi gagalangin yung ating uh, basic human rights as contexted uh, and, and described uh, 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 efficiently by uh, our uh, stakeholders here kanina. So yun lang, gusto ko lang pong uh, linawin po yun. I, I'll give the floor to Senator Bato. He's been uh, waiting for quite some time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, <coughs> I just would like to ask this question sa DOLE, sa OWA, sa POEA, and other agencies no, na involved dito sa mga migrant workers. Uh, are you continuously monitoring your personnel, yung mga employees ninyo, if uh, kung sino sa kanila merong conflict of interest? Like uh, they're working with the government, at the same time, involved sila sa recruitment business, rec recruitment agency. The reason why I ask this question, Mr. Chair, is that when I went to Alcubar, kinausap ko yung mga OFW natin dito in distress. Then sabi ko sa kanila, sige, yung mga, yung mga complaint ninyo, bigay nyo sa akin at ipasa ko yan sa pulo para maaksyon na nila. Alam mo, sagot lahat ng mga babae doon, sabi nila, ah, wala rin mangyari dyan, sir. Huwag na yung uh, ibigay doon sa kanila dahil uh, yung mga sila rin naman, ang, yung mga tao niya, sila rin involved sa recruitment business nito, sir. So, gusto ko lang maklaro yan na sana, baka pinaglala, they, they are, uh, they are uh, working under your nose. Hindi nyo alam na yung mga tao pala ninyo na nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno at the same time, sila rin involved sa recruitment. So, how can you regulate? and police at the same time. 
kung kayo mismo ang dapat i-regulate. So, paki-check lang. I'm not accusing. This is based on my personal experience when I went to Alcobar. In fact, yung mga babae doon na naka nakatambak sa isang lugar, I wanted to get inside but uh, pinigilan ako nung nung kuan hari-hari doon, bawal nga or what. Gusto ko lang sana talaga maramdaman ko anong ano kailangan nila pero sabi hindi daw ko pwedeng pumunta. Ang ginawa ng mga babae, naglabas ng karton doon sa bintana, nakalagay doon Sir Bato, please help. Help. Sabi ko parang kawawa naman itong mga tao na ito. I don't know kung dinadramatize lang nila, pero uh, yun lang ang gusto kong paparating sa inyo na sana uh, uh, tingnan nyo mga tao natin. Ito, isa pang question. Paparating ko lang, Mr. Chair. Kay Yusek Ariola daw. Sino pong nag-otos kang Helen Grace Tabor? DFA Regional OIC para papirmahin si Mr. Villaverde ng SPA about blood money. Sir, definitely. Confirm? Uh, it confirmed that, 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 that the lady being uh, mentioned by Senator Bato is from I, DFA? I don't, I, I don't know the name, Your Honor, but uh, the, the we have no... Uh, Helen Grace Tabor, baka hustler ito. Uh, ah, actually, Your Honor, we, Sir, I, I'm, I don't know. Personally, I don't know her because the SPA, the, the official SPA was only transmitted to labor last Friday through a letter. Baka interesado lang ito sa 50 million na blood uh, money. Kaya are, ito nag pumapapil doon. We are the SPA, SPA exists. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Uh, okay. In fact, uh, um, it was discussed with uh, OWA and the Department of Labor yesterday by the Executive Director of DFA. We are investigating that matter, Your Honor. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for blood chef. money. I think uh, Senator Nancy is asking what, 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 what's the content. Uh, can, can we have a copy of that uh, SPA? Sir, what we can give you is the official transmission. Yes. Of, uh, we can okay. give the committee, which was transmitted last Friday, Your Honor. So there's already an offer. Because uh, sir, no, as of the offer, we don't know about because it. Because we have we seen this uh, uh, in, in uh, social media, no? yes. uh, rampant. In fact, uh, Senator Bato, we actually wanted to invite the family of uh, Jeneline, but uh, we also respect the, the na itong time na to, to, to mourn and uh, uh, not be here uh, today, especially uh, medyo mabigat, eh, no? Uh, Kanina nga, tinigil na rin natin muna yung, uh, yung uh, description noong uh, autopsy report ni uh, Dr. Rodaje and we'll do it in an executive uh, session uh, perhaps later. But uh, we'll get to that uh, soon. Hindi naman ito huling uh, pagdinig. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look into it, Senator Bato. Um, Senator Aimee? Uh, yes, uh, uh, while uh, we're on the topic of uh, the DFA and at the risk of violating human rights, uh, and not allowing you to eat lunch. Isang huling hirit na lang po uh, sa DFA. Uh, we've had uh, the SARS virus, the MERS virus. We now have the novel coronavirus. Uh, nagkaroon na rin tayo ng uh, mandatory evacuations from Libya, from Iraq and Iran. Nagugulat ako sa DFA na sinasabi ninyo, wala kayong contingency plan at uh, pinapaubaya na lamang sa DOH at sa Interagency Committee. Ang pakaraming contingency plan po, sunod-sunod ito, nagugulat ako bakit sinasabi ninyo na DOH. At the end of the day, trabaho po ito ng D the DFA, hindi DOH. Kapag may evacuation, repatriation, anumang galaw ng migration, eh talagang uh, trabaho ng DFA, bakit wala kayong contingency plan, hindi man lamang uh, naisip yung mga mandatory isolation, quarantine, iba't iba pang contingencies. Your, your Honor, uh, we have, uh, in fact, we have department orders for in, in the past. Um, but Marami nito, yes, eh, Your Honor. kasi nag-repatriate uh, nag, uh, na tayo from Libya, Iraq, Iran. Sunod-sunod na to, it's not yes, a first your, time. Your Kaya Honor, nagugulat ako na puro DOH ang tinuturo mo. Your Honor, because uh, in this case, Your Honor, it's not an ordinary evacuation. So uh, we were discussing it with some of our posts yesterday, and they were saying that they were not agreeable to the protocols that were used during the SARS and the other uh, 
uh, in the other, what do you call this, in the Matagal -tagal other... Matagal-tagal na itong uh, novel Corona. Siguro isubmit na ninyo kaagad. Yes, kasi Your Honor. Hindi naman pwedeng antayin ng antayin habang lumalala itong uh, virus na to. At uh, it's not so different at the end of the day from SARS, MERS, and the other uh, infectious diseases that we've confronted in the past. Kailangan may plano naman din yes, ang Your DFA. Honor. Uh, your, your Honor, uh, today the, the interagency of uh, DOH and DFA are, are already with, the, with Secretary Duque, and we should be coming up with uh, the, the whole protocol today, Your Honor. Oo, mabagal-bagal, pero i-submit na rin po ninyo. Kasi yung contingency plan should be standard. They are standing, they are uh, available at any time, they are uh, fairly uniform uh, with a clear assessment of the risks, and uh, they are not merely health. So I think that's clearly a DFA task. Sir Honor, it's just that in this case, uh, we have to uh, also talk to the government of China where the quarantine will be because they have to be uh, the, the past, uh, the WHO regulations, that they have to be quarantined also outside the... Uh, no, sir. Sir, no, uh, ma'am, uh, it was only this January that we were informed of NCOV by China. But uh, we will come up with it because we have to, they have to be quarantined in China and they have to be also quarantined here in the Philippines. So we have to clarify the protocol, Sir Honor, with, uh, with DOH. We cannot just uh, make one on our own because we are not medical practitioners. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Senator Bongo, uh, I think it's important you may, you mention about the upcoming hearing. Um, meron tayong hearing about uh, coronavirus uh, Tuesday. It, and then uh, I heard nga po nag, uh, nagkaroon ng meeting kanina sa, between DFA, uh, DOH, at magkakaroon yata ng press call ngayon. Kung ano nang napag-usapan nila doon and ano yung mga measures na dapat gawin at sa mga gustong umuwi dito. Uh, kung papayagan na po ng uh, bansang China. Anyway, uh, Yusek, uh, Sara, ito bang naniniwala ka ba dito sa pagpapadala natin ng mga workers? Swerte-swerte rin yan sa mga employer doon. Um, Your Honor, I, I remember in 2018 after the death of Joanna de Mafelis, the President was very adamant in saying that the Filipino was no slave to anyone, anywhere and everywhere. And uh, in, in, the, in Kuwait, Your Honor, come not only Indonesia stopped deployment, but also um, Sudan, Somalia, and Cambodia. So there are already countries that really stopped deployment. I think um, it will be better for us to upskill the, um, the, the skills of our, of our workers than not to than to keep on deploying household service workers because they are in the most vulnerable position. By the time they go to government, there's already a violation that has been done. And the uh, kafala, aggravated by very high deployment costs in the Middle East, will really contribute to the abuse that they are going through. So as much as possible, Your Honor, it's, we have no problem with them being deployed, but it's better to deploy um, them in safe, orderly, in a regular way. And we can see that the safety now is being compromised in this kind of profession. Anyway, uh, paalala ko na lang po sa lahat, sa OWA, sa DFA, sa PUA, sa NBI, sa lahat, sa DOLE. Pakitutok na lang itong kasong ito. Maybe uh, a life for a life ang usapan na uh, dito. At uh, kailangan natin yung hustisya para kay Jeneline. Hindi naman natin mababalik yung buhay niya, pero yung hustisya po ang dapat maibigay. Ano bang uh, paraan ng kanila? Ano? Death sentence ba? Paano ba? Hanging? Stoning? Uh, da da dapat sa mga yan, putulan. Putulan ng... Basta putulan. Uh, I think the uh, admin hands uh, wanted to answer the question, but uh, can you also get uh, no, um, an update as to uh, the latest development on this case? Because as Asek Bellio made mention a while ago that uh, the, uh, the 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 couple was charged with murder already. I think it was was it yesterday lang, and they're being detained. If if we can have more information on that as well, see so, yeah, admin down. Yes, well, sir, we will provide information. And as the Secretary mentioned, we will head for Kuwait uh, this Friday 
uh, and get more details and updates uh, with the with the uh, case. And uh, also, sir, uh, the family had asked, had requested K. Secbelio na pag tumatakbo na raw yung kaso sa korte, uh, if uh, the father would have a chance to be personally present sa, sa hearing. So, okay naman po kay Sec, so that could be arranged uh, in a future, on a future date. Uh, gusto ko lang pong tumugon dun sa point ni Senator Bato and assure the good Senator na closely monitored po ang mga tao natin on the ground, uh, sir. Uh, siguro ko nandito si Sec Bello, sasabihin niya yung uh, gustong-gusto niyang paulit-ulit na sinasabi na uh, instant recall po ang mga tao niya, tao namin. Uh, kapag merong kahit anong reklamo po patungkol sa sa kanila at sabay non disciplinary action upon return we can provide the committee with the information along these lines uh, tapos po dagdag po dito we do the rounds po sir uh, halimbawa po nung nobyembre uh, at nung isang linggo nagtungo po ako sa Alcobar mismo at dinalaw ko po yung mga shelter natin para sigurado po sir mapanatili natin yung pangangalaga natin sa kanila at pag-asikaso sa kanilang mga kaso Si DA Moka Uson, uh, nung Pasko po, and I understand uh, Yusek Ariola as well, nagtungo ng Saudi at ibang bansa sa Middle East para po i-monitor at tignan yung kanyang sitwasyon. So just an assurance po sa, sa ating mahal na senador at uh, mahal na komite na monitor po natin uh, yung mga tao natin on the ground. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Administrator Kaknak. Thank you. Yes, uh, Sir, siguro yes, uh, um, medyo humupa na naman yung sitwasyon sa Iraq, but can we just get uh, siguro short update from um, NSC and, the and Office uh, of Civil Defense? Pwede ba, Mr. Uh -huh. Chen? Uh, b before we, 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 we recognize, no? can, can we just put the ano yung timeline? Ayan, nag nagrema lang sa akin yung bilanggit ni, uh, ni uh, Kabayan Toots Ople uh, when regards to effective monitoring. no? Kasi I've been asking these questions eh, sa, sa mga staff ko. May 11, 2018, we signed the MOU uh, with Kuwait. And then, October 2019 na yung, yung sumunod na bilateral joint committee meeting. Is this correct? Are these correct uh, uh, dates? 2018 yan, yung October, no? So, May... June, July, August, September, October. After five months, dun lang nagkaroon ng bilateral, ng bilateral uh, uh, joint meeting. And in that joint meeting, dyan pinad, pinasabi sa atin that they will not sign yung, uh, uh, yung uh, unified contract. Is that, is that correct? Kasi ang point ko lang ho, uh, I don't know who, who can answer this uh, question, ang point ko lang, para medyo matagal, 2018 pala yan, 2018 yan, uh, still, no, uh, ang ano ko lang ho, yung, yung timeline kasi pag tinitignan, may mga nangyari na, and still, uh, admin uh, Olalia, you're, you're with POEA, still, during those times, namatay, uh, I think, meron namang isa si uh, Constancia Dayag, there was no movement at all to, for example, to declare a partial ban whatsoever, is this, ano, hindi pa ho ba red flag yun? Yes, sir. Uh, I-clarify lang natin, sir, no? After the signing of uh, the Memorandum of Understanding between the Philippine government and Kuwaiti government on May 11, 2018, nagkaroon po tayo ng uh, tinatawag na JCM or yung Joint Committee Meeting. One of the provisions po ng MOU is for both parties to meet to raise some concerns and issues regarding the implementation of this MOU. Noong October 2018 po, ni-raise po ng Philippine delegation yung issue for the uh, crafting of a harmonized standard employment contract. Kaya lang po, nag-sumagot nag, uh, ang Kuwaiti side, sabi po nila, let's do the proper channel, wala pa kaming nare-receive ng draft coming from the Philippine government, you course it through the DFA, and DFA will give it to uh, the counterpart. No? Just moving forward, when would be the next uh, uh, GCM po? Oh, yung, yung binabanggit na ba yun ni... This uh, February 2 to 3. Sa February 2 to 3. So it, the 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 trips of Secretary Bello and the admin hands yes. has nothing to do with the contract signing or. Ito, ito or po the, yan, sir. Ito, ito po na yun. Yan. Because yeah. this Friday, di ba, you're, you're going. 
Ah, okay. okay. You're also going. Yes, sir. Sige. Okay. Salamat. Thank you. Just give us an update. Uh, we'll proceed now with the uh, Senator Nancy's concern. Uh, let's let's uh, give the floor to uh, DDG uh, Agdamag, sir. Sorry, you're recognized. And then we'll give the floor to Asek uh, Purisima. Thank you. We have uh, a handful uh, of issues today in this committee. Thank you very much, uh, Your Honors. Uh, this is the situation in... Uh, in the Middle East as a whole, especially on Iraq. Uh, ang background po is uh, on uh, January 8, 2020, uh, the, the Iranian uh, general, Soleimani, was killed by an airstrike ordered by the U.S. in Iraq near Baghdad International Airport. U.S. DOD stated that Soleimani was actively developing plans to attack American diplomats members in Iraq and throughout the region. The Department of Defense also accused him of approving the assault on the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad on 31 December of 2019. So ano po yung uh, response ng Iran? On 7 January, Iran launched more than a dozen ballistic missiles targeting U.S. bases in Iraq. Ngayon po, nakita natin yung, uh, yung embassy sa Iraq ay in po ulit ng uh, rockets. Foreign uh, Minister Sharif says, Tehran doesn't seek escalation of war after attack as revenge to force Soleimani assassination. On January 11, Iranian military has admitted unintentionally shooting down a Ukrainian passenger jet killing all 176 people on board. The plane had flown close to a sensitive military side and was mistaken as a hostile target. Ano po yung uh, reaction ng, uh, ng mundo or global reactions? Iranian President Hassan Rouhani vowed to seek harsh retaliation. The American airstrike cost vowed not to be bound by the restrictions of the nuclear agreements. UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez urged leaders to exercise maximum restraint as the world cannot afford another war. So ano po yung impact to the Philippines? I think we have uh, 2.5, uh, more or less about 2.5 uh, 2.2, .2. that's the data of DFA. If you yes, talk sir. to Dole, it's a different data. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll look so, into that later. So, if, pag nagkaroon po na escalation uh, of uh, situation in the Middle East, around 1.62 billion, an additional of 13 billion contingency fund will be used by the overseas Philippine workers' repatriation. The October 2019 data from the uh, Banco Central of the Philippines shows around 409,000 U.S. dollars came from Iran and around 259,000 dollars was from Iraq. Meanwhile, about 1.78 million dollars come from Saudi Arabia. Right now, the crisis alert level for Iraq has been raised to alert level 4, mandatory repatriation, while Iran and Lebanon was placed back to le alert level 3 or voluntary repatriation. So, nandun na po yung ating uh, Coast Guard vessel, yung Gabriela Silang, in the vicinity, and uh, our two ships from the Navy are on their way. Third, siguro ang isang major question, uh, kasi hindi ko kami... Uh, lahat familiar dito sa mga alert levels na ito. Can you give us uh, ano lang ho, a, a, a briefing dito? Yung when do you declare alert level 2, 3, and then this uh, 4? Uh, is this standard? Is this being uh, practiced also by other countries? Uh, 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 Your Honor, this is a in coordination actually with the Department with the, with of the Department. Oh, yes, yeah, we'll we'll yes, ask sir. that later. You, you, you can finish your presentation. Okay. Uh, so what are the uh, U.S.-Iran capabilities right now? In the annual 2019 review, 
the U.S. is ranked as the world's strongest military, while Iran was placed number 14. So, medyo malakas din po yung Iran, no? Uh, out of 137 countries. For, to, for, for political alliances in the region, the U.S. enjoys cordial relations with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the United, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Israel, while Iran's key allies include Iraq, Lebanon, and Syria. So what are the U.S. sanctions on Iran? On January 9, U.S. Treasury Secretary uh, Stephen uh, Munchin has announced new economic sanctions on Iran aimed at cutting off billions of dollars of support to the Iranian regime. Additionally, President Trump has taken several critical steps in 2019 as part of his campaign to apply maximum pressure on Tehran. Notably, Trump's action was described as risk never taken by past presidents, even if Soleimani was in plain sight for years. In the Philippines, the worsening U.S.-Iran conflict, especially if the situation will involve the allies of both countries in the Middle East, will definitely trigger the repatriation of the OFWs. The expected reduction in the remittances of the repatriated Filipino workers will likewise be a challenge to the economic managers of the government. On the situation of, of imports from the Middle East, serious consideration must be undertaken by the country's Department of Energy and other resilient level relevant agencies relative to the contingency measures that need to be put in place to mitigate supply restrictions and thereby manage domestic oil uh, price fluctuation. So yun po yung uh, uh, effect sa atin yes. impact. Mr. Chair, pero yung sitwasyon ko ngayon parang nag-normalize na, di ba? Parang uh, the, the, ano ba yan? Parang, hindi, parang, parang tile volcano, di ba? Parang medyo tumahimik. <laughs> Parang hindi ko sinasabing tapos na, pero parang medyo tumahimik siya. If you but, watch but alert level 4 is still... Uh, sa Iraq lang po. Sa Iraq. Iraq. Iraq lang po. Sa Iraq? Iraq. Sa Iraq. Di Ngayon ba, po, uh, ang, ang, uh, ang, uh, ang nangyari because uh, Secretary Simo, Simato just arrived from uh, Middle East. Kasi ba parang but, naging sentimento ko, parang quit sa sila, di ba? Parang... Um, Pinatay si General, tapos yung nagpadala sila ng uh, misa, ay dun sa Ir Iran. Diba? So parang medyo nakarevenge na si yung isa. Di ba parang gano'n? I mean, parang gano'n daw yung yeah. sitwasyon. Kaya medyo Honor, humupa na ng konti. Uh, severe economic sanctions po ang binigay ng US. Then pwede po hung, uh, lum, lum, tumaas po yon into a uh, military action. But yung OFW natin um, sa Iraq. Hindi, ilan ho yung oh, nag, ano, voluntary two, repatriation? Two, two, two. Uh, so far, tat, 13 po ang nakabalik na. Out of 21. 21. 21 ang bago. Yeah. Kasi 13 noon, ngayon 21. This is out of 1,640. 1, That's the total number of uh, Filipinos in Iraq alone. Yes, Your Honor. And most, uh, and more than 400 of them are undocumented. Many of them oh, are... Out of the 1,600, 400 yung... 400 uh, plus, Your Honor, undocumented. are undocumented. We have a slide for that, Your Honor. And, okay. and, and most of them are trafficked to Iraq. And, and so far, 21 have uh, come Balik home. Yeah. 21. Yes, Your uh, Honor. Uh, again, uh, this, is, this, this is a little confusing on, on, on our end. That's alert level for yes. mandatory uh, repatriation. No? Um, but do they really have a choice to say, no, we don't want to be repatriated? Yes. Well, so we cannot say this is forced repatriation if they have an option to say, no, we, we, we're, not, we're not leaving this country. Uh, actually, this is m really more for the uh, for the, for our embassy and post to continually convince our kababayans to to come home. Um, 
the challenge, Your Honor, is some of them have good jobs there. And uh, just like in Libya, where the higher the risk, the higher the pay. So they always tell us, if we return to the Philippines, can you match our six figures? So, which of course we can't. <laughs> I mean, like we, because a, a lot of them are asking what will happen to us if we return. But the more troubling, Your Honor, is that we have a lot of OFWs in Iraq who were trafficked. I mean, they either entered through Dubai or Qatar and they're brought there. Uh, and they did not know that they will be brought to, to a war zone. Yeah, because we're talking about uh, the, the, the readiness, the preparedness of the government to uh, uh, evacuate and have this proactive response in case we need to repatriate our people. So there's 1,600 plus in Iraq, and then I don't know how much, uh, how, how, how many more in Iran and, uh, and the affected areas, because the only country with alert level 4 is Iraq. And yung Iran and Lebanon is alert level 3. Sir, and yet, ang, 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 ang nag-ano lang sa isip natin, no? Libya. Nagpadala na tayo ngayon ng, uh, ng uh, RR... Rap rapid response. Your Honor, rapid response teams in Baghdad and Erbil. Yes, yes. and uh, yung uh, isang barko natin o dalawa na yata yung uh, uh, pinadeploy. But if you are saying na our kababayans will... Are not, are not even entertaining the idea of going home. Pa paano ho yun? Hindi ko lang ma ma mapagtugma. Um, Your Honor, just like in Libya, in Tripoli, uh, some of our kababayans evacuated to the embassy with no intention of leaving leaving Tripoli. Uh, it's because they have good, <laughs> they have worked there and they're saying that they still have people here in the Philippines who are relying on their remittances. So, uh, of course, we cannot bodily lift them and we cannot really force them into the, to the plane. So, same thing with Iraq. In fact, Your Honor, in Erbil, a lot of our kababayans are messaging us that why are they included in the alert level 4? Because they are at peace uh, there. But Erbil might be relatively peaceful, but when you pass through the, I mean, you go out outside of Erbil, that's the ISIS area going to Sulaymaniyah. And so... It's in the northern uh, That's, a northern, side, that's uh -huh. the Kurdish Iraq, Your Honor. So we're trying our, re our best and we're making ourselves available on, on the ground in case they want to come home. But um, with all due respect, the, your, your best is not good enough yes, if, if yes, we're Your saying... Honor. And, and, and not only talking about the DFA, but all, all other agencies. I mean, if, if our kababayans would, would, would rather stay there and face missiles uh, instead of uh, going home, parang... Parang wala talagang, hindi talaga attractive for them to, to come home. Um, and, and that's my, my question again. Uh, it's a good thing that you pointed out in the northern part of uh, Iraq. Erbil, I think, I, I heard about it. Ayaw umuwi nila doon. Kasi they are saying, totally wala silang nararamdamang gera or wala silang naririnig, etc. So, Ano ho ba yun? Ibig sabihin ba yung alert level 4 lang ay doon sa Baghdad lang or talagang kasama ho talaga sila? And yun nga ho, no, when we say alert level 4, we're, we're, we're saying uh, mandatory repatriation. So when we say mandatory repatriation, sa aking thinking ay talagang ipo-force mo no, na, na i-repatriate yung ating uh, mga kababayan. Uh, Your Honor, actually there was... There are also U.S. camps in the in that area in Erbil. Uh, we we looked at the U.S. presence in the Middle East, and they have m more than a dozen uh, U.S. bases almost in every country in the Middle East, uh, and they have warships in the area. And we, I think the the conflict might not be as big, but the it might be asymmetrical warfare or proxy wars. So we are looking at. Uh, the possibility, because if they're really in harm's way, anything can happen. It's just like like Senator Nan Nancy Binay said, that it's like Taal Volcano. So um, the problem, Your Honor, is that the, the income but in is Taal very Volcano, high. Volcano, Sky Ranch is now operating. <laughs> yes, some yes, yes. Th that's what I'm saying yeah. also. Yeah. Uh -huh. Your Honor, um, our, our instructions from the Secretary is to stay on the ground and s until, you know, the last Filipino has left. So that's why we have people on the ground. Siguro, Mr. Chair, alam naman natin na limited lang yung resources natin, di ba? And meron tayong dalawang barko na nag-aantay doon <laughs> na may sumakay na kababayan natin, di ba? But at the same time, we also have a problem 
dito sa virus na ito. So, baka kailangan pag-aralan, baka yung resources natin, eh, medyo kailangan i-shift to, uh, kumbaga, yung, mas, yung kailangan. Kasi nga, mukhang ayaw umalis talaga ng mga kababayan natin. I don't think, kaya nyo namang katukin sa mga bahay nila at hulihin yun at isa kayo dun sa, sa barko, di ba? Because we cannot, we cannot wait for them forever na uuwi sila dito sa bansa natin. So kaya, siguro pag-aralan nyo na maka na nga, lagi may deadline na parang, sige, uh, kung after a month or after two months, talagang wala, baka nga, you need to redirect your resources. Yes, uh, Your Honor, we will have another assessment assessment uh, uh, as regards yung uh, status ng mga Filipino, especially in Iraq uh, and Libya po, in Libya. But in logistically, Iraq. you're, you're, you're prepared, oh, sir? Uh, sapat yung ating uh, resources para gawin po itong uh, uh, repatriation or mandatory repatriation? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, we, we are prepared uh, as far as the uh, armed Forces of the Philippines and uh, Coast Guard's concern, are concerned. Sige, send na. Eh, siguro yung reintegration, katulad na itong umuwi na 21, 21 ba? Ano yung uh, reintegration program natin for the 21? And I assume doon sa 21, ilan doon yung documented at saka undocumented? No, all of them are undocumented, and there are children also. Three so you mean children. to say that the documented, wala pa umuwi? Wala. I mean, because they, the, uh, the documented are the ones who were there during Saddam's time, and they, okay, they, they wala sila. ayaw talaga nila your honor because there was out time that they had a balik manggagawa in Erbil area until nag alert level four tayo. So uh, we are being resented for that, but then we just want them to come home because we don't know any any time there could be conflict. And I think majority sa kanila nagtatrabaho at adon sa kam. Eh. Iba pa yun, Your Honor. Actually, Di the ba ones... mga civilian contractors? Di ba, na actually, Your Honor, the ones inside the U.S. camps, uh, we don't know who they are, how many they are, and uh, because the U.S. government does not want to give us information, but we have been reassured that they will be protected in the same way that any U.S. Uh, uh, military personnel will so be protected. So, you mean to say, this 1,600, hindi pa kasama yung nandun sa, nasa mga U.S. bases? Yes, Your Honor. Because the ones in the U.S. bases did not pass through POEA at all. Uh, they were contracted directly, Your Honor. Wow. Anyway, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, we, we wanted to, to ask that question. Because um, forced repatriation or mandatory repatriation, ayo pa rin ng mga kababayan natin. And uh, I, I think we're not doing... Uh, uh, perhaps a, 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 a good job of convincing them to, to go home. Uh, so perhaps the, be the best question to ask right now is, ano ba yung ino-offer talaga natin? Bakit ayaw talaga nila? And you made mention a while ago, six figures. Are they, uh, some of them are earning six figures? Especially, Your Honor, the ones uh, working in the oil rigs of Libya. These are engineers. The engineers and the... Uh, okay. And, and domestic, uh, meron ba your Honor, ano, um, fortunately, in Libya, we don't have household service workers. Sa Iraq? Iraq, the traffic are the domestic workers. The ones coming from Dubai. So itong 21 na to, ito yung mga Iba domestic ba? But some, some, some of them are, Your Honor, some of them are working in salons, but still traffic. Some of them are married to Iraqis. Siguro, you know, uh, let's, 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 uh, uh, let's talk about it. Ano ba yung na-offer natin? Kaya natin i-offer. Para bumalik po sila. Baka naman meron tayong other than safety. Uh, meron tayong uh, may iyo offer na medyo ano. Sige ho, uh, Sir, let's let give the floor to admin. Let me explain the package Hans. of services from the Dole OWA perspective. Uh, may tatlong klase ng OFWs na uuwi from, from Kuwait from the, from the reintegration perspective. One is yung active OWA member meaning updated ang kanyang OWA contributions. At uh, marami dito sa mga professionals, updated. Halimbawa, yung nurses na nabanggit, uh, sa isang ospital, mga 60% sa kanila, active OWA members. Updated. Alam nung nurses yung pangangailangan na mag-update. Kaya ta, ang panawagin namin ay mag-update ng OWA membership every two years. Yung pangalawa, inactive OWA member. Ibig sabihin, 
dati siya ay documented from another country, let's say uh, Qatar, tapos tumalon ng Iraq. Obviously, for the reasons na mentioned, ng salary and, and what have you. So, tumalon ng Iraq, tapos undocumented na from the Philippine government perspective, posibleng undocumented din from the Iraqi perspective, but hindi na na-update yung OWA contribution. So, meron hong reintegration benefits yung both returning OWA members, whether active or inactive. Mas malaki lang po yung sa active. Merong cash assistance uh, yung, yung active. Merong uh, uh, pangkabuhayan benefit ng 20,000 yung active. Cash assistance and pangkabuhayan ng 2020. 40. 40. And then, yung inactive, this is for Iraq po, no? And then, for uh, inactive, 10-10 naman ang formula. So, 10 cash assistance, 10 uh, livelihood. Doon sa non-OA member at all, yung kinikwento ni Yusek Sara na talagang punta lang ng, lumitaw na lang doon <laughs> for one reason or another, undocumented from the Philippine perspective, non-OA member, uh, meron din ho silang reintegration benefit from the National Reintegration Center, but it is a 10,000 peso non-cash benefit. So, ito ho, yung lahat na nabanggit ko is from the livelihood cash assistance perspective. Ang dole, meron naman trabaho, negosyo, kabuhayan, as you know, Mr. Chair, program, TNK na tinatawag, in partnership with DTI. So, with the Bureau of Local Employment, of local employment ng dole, linalatagan yung mga returning workers ng job openings or opportunities dito sa bayan natin. Nabanggit ni SEC yung isa, yung Build, Build, Build program. Nakaangkla po ang dole doon with SEC Mark Villar and the Build, Build, Build Secretariat. Yung DOH po, naka-plug in din ho tayo sa kanilang Rural Health Services program. Uh, kaya sinasabi nila yung mga returning nurses at health workers, pwede rin ho latagan ng mga options nila sa Rural Health Services. Uh, yun pong POA naman, uh, uh, I might already be speaking for Admin Olalia, but we know na ang si Admin Olalia ay uh, kinonvene yung mga recruitment agencies at kinalap yung mga job orders nila that could stand as alternative markets for those who are returning. I have a question for that. If, if that is the case, can we also do it while they are there so that we don't need to bring them here? if they can actually uh, possess the uh, competencies and the requirements being uh, uh, sought by the employers, can we do that? Because the problem, and, and, and it, it, it's from a personal experience, the mga pinapa natin, you, you made mention, uh, admin, pagka OWA, uh, active, medyo maganda, no? may 20K, may 20K na kabuhayan, may 20K na uh, cash assistance, that's 40 at least. Probably, maka-start na rin, no? kahit pa paano. But yung inactive, yung 10K, 10K, medyo ganun na po yan, no? Pag non-OWA, ah, talagang makikipagsapalaran na to Talagang kahit na buhatin nyo ako, kahit na hilahin nyo ako, ah, hindi, pagtataguan ko na kayo. Di bali ng bala ng baril yung kaharapin ko kesa pupunta ako dito, meron akong non-cash benefit, uh, uh, na being offered scholarship, siguro yan, etc., job opening, na hindi ko pa alam. But, but, but what I'm saying is, if we have these job openings, for example, abroad or different country, can they, I mean, this is a question naman, can they, can they actually apply for it while, while, while being there so that we can be perhaps more effective in convincing them na, oy, mas safe ka dito, dito sa, for example, meron sa Singapore or sa sa Canada or sa Malaysia, etc. Pwede ba natin yun? May, may ganun ho ba tayo? Nagagawa na ba natin yun? O talagang they have to come here para pagdating dito, uh, kaya ayaw umuwi ng mga OFWs na may trabaho doon, sabi na magsisimula na naman kami sa scratch eh. Siguro sir, pwede yun sa mga direct hire natin. No? They can uh, directly talk with the employers and then uh, papadala po yung employment contract so sa We kanila. can facilitate, that's what Opo. I'm saying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ang kailangan lang po doon, ma-verify at saka ma-authenticate yung kanilang uh, employments para po sigurado na well-protected sila doon sa pupuntahan nilang countries of destination. Very important. So, thank you. But right now, we're not doing it, pal. Not yet, sir. Uh, perhaps we can, we can explore. Uh, I've been thinking of ways on how we'll be able to to convince our kababayans. 
And for example, nagpadala na tayo ngayon dun ng dalawang barko. I don't know how long it's going to, to, to take para konbinsihin sila. At pag umuwi po yun na dalawang barko, kung pitu-walo lang ang iuuwi nun, baka mas maganda pang pamasayihan na lang muna natin ng, ng uh, airfare. So, so I, I'm just... No, I'm just a little confused kasi na parang, sige, nagpadala tayo dalawang barko. Pero I think since uh, day one or whenever crisis like this would arise, I was with DESDA before and uh, I remember offering a lot of uh, scholarship programs for our repatriated uh, kababayan. Almost zero to none, sir, ang magtitake. They're always asking, saan kami pwede magpunta? Anong pwede naming, uh, uh, may makukuha ba kami dyan, lalo na pag TESDA? Sabi niya, ah, TESDA lang, eh, scholarship lang yan. Ayaw. <laughs> eh, Mag-aaral pa kami. <laughs> Paano yung mga, we have mouths to feed. So these are the things lang siguro na magandang mapag-usapan. Dahil, well, I don't know. Kasi, uh, I think even before we, we sent this uh, uh, barcos and, and, and all these efforts, alam na rin natin ito eh. And this is not something new na, na hindi talaga papayag basta-basta yung mga kababayan nating umuwi. And that's why, again, I, I still question yung forced repatriation or mandatory repatriation. Pero anytime pala, pwede nilang sabihin, hindi. I uh, would exercise my right na bahala na ako sa buhay ko dito. Ay, sorry. <laughs> Asa ka purisima. Sorry, sorry. I almost forgot. Can we uh, hear from uh, the Office of Civil Defense? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Honorable Members of the Committee. Just to provide a b brief background, on January 5, uh, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte called an emergency meeting uh, regarding the Middle East situation uh, with the Secretary of National Defense, Silvin Lorenzana, and the FPN PNP officials present. And subsequently, on January 7, a memorandum from the executive secretary was issued creating a committee to oversee the repatriation of Filipinos from the Middle East with the Secretary of National Defense as chairperson, with the National Security Advisor as vice chairperson, and with the secretaries of Foreign Affairs, Labor and Employment, Environment and Natural Resources, Interior and Local Government, and of Transportation as members. Um, in terms of the direct intervention of the uh, Department of National Defense, Your Honor. AFP contingency plan pagpauli was formulated and thereafter an AFP joint task force pagpauli was activated. Um, and just to confirm the information earlier uh, mentioned, two naval vessels are on their way to the Middle East, our BRP Davao del Sur and our BRP Ramon Alcaraz. They, they're, they are now in uh, Sri Lanka, Your Honor. Malapit na po. Uh, they will, they will so, pwede naman silang bumalik pa pala. <laughs> or Pero mas malapit na po sila doon, uh, Your Honor. Or they, pwede ba silang magantay na lang sa China? <laughs> uh, they, they are scheduled to arrive in uh, uh, Muscat, Oman, around on or about February 5. So just a, a, a week from now. Where was it uh, the recommendation of uh, uh, any government agency for, for, for the government to, to send uh, these two uh, vessel? Uh, the, this was upon the directive of the president. It's, it's the uh, president's uh, decision. Huh? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, but what we are sending is a, is a humanitarian contingent. Oh, okay. And we're it's not primarily to repatriate our... Partly, that's, that's just that's part of the it, mission, no? but, uh, Your Honor. The but main they, mission is for humanitarian. Yes, okay. yes, Your Honor. And we're, the AFP, the DND, we're in a coordi constant coordination with the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Department of Labor and Employment, uh, Your Honor. Sige po. Uh, one last, yung, yung, ay, sir, sorry. Sige po, please, please. Ang ano ko lang sana, i-raise ko lang yung sa alert levels talagang, is it really a standard? It's not, uh, it's a internationally, uh, uh, ano na, standard. Hindi tayo lang yung nagsasabi ito. Alert level, ano na. Ito na yung parameters. Yeah. And, uh, Your Honor, we're using the Philippine standards because the UN is using their own. Oh, okay. Uh, we have our own standards. Yes. This is uh, this was, I think, conceptualized during the time of General, when General Sematu was heading the, the Iraq one. Okay. 
Um, perhaps we we can also give us uh, some 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 of your uh, uh, position on this, no? Because, agaya nung sinasabi natin, uh, kung forced repatriation ayaw nung kababayan natin, I don't know, no? Uh, how, how do we how do we make that decision? Nasabihin natin, oh, sige ayaw mo di sige wag pero I'm sure alam naman natin di natin masisik mura pag uh, dumating yung time na hihingi ng tulong we will also be there. So, I, I, I don't know. Uh, at least, let's, let's look into this. Baka meron kayong gustong isuggest. Baka meron tayong pwedeng uh, i-tweak sa ating uh, mga batas o ano man na po pwede natin gawin uh, in legislation. Thank you. Uh, Senator Nancy? As a Q, ano ba natin? May permit to, ano na, dock? Kasi di ba parang may ganun ding issue ata? Uh, para it cannot dock sa Iraq? We're getting the necessary uh, clearances, uh, diplomatic clearances, through DFA. Uh, so we're we're under a one-country approach. So AFP, DND were in support of the repatriation efforts, uh, primarily led by DFA, um, and uh, we're coordinating with them and with the host nations for the docking of our vessels and also for the necessary permits. So what's the next along. option? Kung hindi tayo makakuha ng docking options. A docking dun sa Iraq. Hindi pa, wala pa docking. Oh, wala pa tayong docking permit, di ba? Uh, bursting rates? Uh, bursting. Uh, Your Honor, we're working on it, but normally they, they allow us for humanitarian uh, uh, missions to, to dock for a certain number of days. Baka pwede dumaan na lang kayong Kuwait, sundin niyo yung mga nasa polo dun, ang daming... Ang dami nag-aantay doon. Actually, that's also, ano, ah, kung sakali, pwede naman, no? Ah. Siguro. Mm -hmm. Si Mig Zubiri, sama niyo kasi kailangan makuarantine galing Hong Kong yun. Makuarantine. Baka pwede yes. mag-ikot doon sa mga polo sa Middle East na nangangailang. Kasi iba doon, di ba? Hindi ba ka-uwi kasi walang, wala pang uh, exit or bibili pa ng ticket or... Baka hindi, para hindi masayang yung biyahe pabalik dito sa Pilipinas. Maraming options na. And I'm sure you're looking at it, right? <laughs> Sige po, uh, ASEC, your, uh, Mr. Chair, we also have air assets on standby uh, in case kailanganin po yun. So D and the AFP were ready to provide support to the repatriation efforts. So curious ako, for coronavirus, wala ba kayong ano din, pinaghahandaan na ganong scenario for... Uh, we're also in constant communication, Your Honor, with the DFA and with uh, DOH. So, kasama kayo dun sa interagency? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Uh, if there's a need to to escalate and a response, the, yun naman po sa NDRMC. So, the NDRMC is ready to act. Because uh, we wanted to have an executive session, Sana, for the... For the the medical legal uh, report but anyway uh we have uh, covered a lot of heavy issues today Siguro, Mr. Chair, before we end just a uh, quick you know, question lang for example admin kakdak um would you recommend a permanent ban for domestic helpers for kuwait well that is part of the prerogative of the secretary of labor and the but POA would you would board. you advise the Secretary of Labor to impose a permanent ban for domestic helpers for Ku domestic helpers lang for Kuwait as a as a policy? Kasi nga di ba parang nakakailang hearing na tayo dito sa Senado. Laging Kuwait na lang yung uh, may fatality or, or, or lagi tayo may problema. It's been what almost I can understand years. where Admin Kakdak is coming from. <laughs> I can un yes, totally I, understand. I would advise so I think uh, uh, we'd, we'd, we already uh, asked the Secretary of Labor to look into this. Uh, uh, as mentioned a while ago by this representation, I have a very, very strong reservation. Mr. Chair, of, can uh, we get lang yung sentiment siguro? Can we, can we ask the... Yes or no the, lang, the, yes or no. Muna. The social welfare officer has not talked ah, since okay. since the beginning of this uh, hearing. Oh, baka siya din, so we'd baka like, siya to, can, can we'd like ano, to give the, 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 the floor to uh, Mr. Bonina yes, of our social po, welfare. Thank you, po, sir. Uh, gusto ko lang po ishare very short lang po. Uh, gusto ko lang ishare ano yung uh, ginagawa ng the SWD uh, in relation to uh, Middle East uh, war. 
Uh, meron po kaming five uh, social welfare attaches sa Middle East and binigyan na namin sila instructions to be ready in case na mag-escalate yung... We passed a law for... Yeah, for yeah. so nandun DNO. po sila doon, meron sila doon. Then uh, mag, uh, bigyan din kami ng augmentation fund in case kailangan. Mayroon Sanu kami mga five? social workers. Sanu Sanu yung five? Jeddah, Riyadh, Kuwait, uh, Abud, uh, Dubai, and uh, Qatar. So yung Kuwait pinakamalapit po. So... In case na halimbawa ang kailangan nilang pumunta doon, so depende sa, sa ano ng RRT and ng, uh, ng DFA and ng, ng ambassador. So, uh, kasi member sila ng country team doon sa embassy. So depende ko anong mapag-desisyonan doon ng, uh, ng, uh, ng ambassador, so they will follow. Uh, and also to be ready kung halimbawa maging yung lugar nila, yung bansang kinalagyan nila is uh, going uh, relocation era, something like that before pumunta ng back to the Philippines. So, we told them to, be, to get ready din. Sa part naman dito sa Pilipinas, meron kaming contingency plan here. Yeah, na, na, ginawa na rin uh, early pa January. And, um, and uh, we have, uh, we instructed all the DSWD regional directors to organize their repatriation teams para humingi na, magbigay ng uh, uh, airport assistance sa lahat ng mga airports pag in case na dumating sa kanila. And dito rin sa Manila, we have uh, 133 staff uh, 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 subdivided into subgroups para magpalitan ma na magbigay ng airport assistance uh, kapag may dumarating ng mga uh, uh, Filip uh, or, uh, Filipinos affected by war. Yeah, and uh, uh, we have reintegration services. Uh, so, uh, ilan po sa mga services namin sa reintegration services yung uh, primarily psychosocial and livelihood, uh, shelter kung kailangan nilang residential, and uh, uh, of course, we will refer them to the LGU also for uh, uh, continuous provision of uh, uh, immediate and uh, long-term uh, welfare and protection uh, services they need. Siguro, Yun Mr. Po. Chair. Mr. Bonilla, nabanggit niya, di ba, meron na tayong social workers sa Kuwait. Yes po, ma'am. Um, so, I guess may feedback na kayo. Would the DSWB um, recommend a permanent ban for the deployment? Um, sa so ngayon po, ang sinasabi po kasi nung uh, social welfare at sinamin doon is okay yung situation sa Kuwait. Yan yung po yung feedback na, uh, well, ma'am, yung po nakuha namin sa okay. ano. Uh, I mean, sa, uh, yeah, sa Kuwait po, sa, I mean, yung sa Kuwait mismo, hindi po hindi, sa Iran. Hindi, hindi, I mean, kasi diba, yeah. yung social worker nyo, trabaho din niya na magbigay ng assistance dun sa mga yeah. nasa polo natin. Ay, 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 ay ma'am, yung regular po, tumutulong po sa, pinag-usap po po natin, ma'am, yung so, pong I guess sa dapat Middle may East. feedback mechanism na kayo na parang sandali, dito sa Kuwait, parang mas maraming naabuso dito, ay, or ay, ay, ma mas marami kami binibigay ng assistance sa Kuwait ah. compared to the other uh, countries. Actually, ma'am, sa totoo po, uh, marami pong cases sa Kuwait. Yung pong regular cases. Marami, marami po. Uh, pero ang, ang nire-report ko po ngayon, ma'am, is tungkol sa Middle East War. Yung Ay, sa Iraq. Iraq. Ay, doon, doon, doon na po ako nakatutok, ma'am. Doon na po ako nakatutok. Doon sa... Hindi, yung regular talaga, marami po cases, ma'am. Sige, paka, po. Mr. Chair, sa next hearing, paka we can get inputs from DSWD based doon sa experience nung social worker nyo on the ground. Opo. Pag kinompare, di ba, may sinabi niya may five uh, Middle East countries sa kayo. Baka you can submit to the committee as uh, uh, parang report ko ano yung nagiging estado ng mga is, ano natin sa polo. This will not office. be our uh, last hearing. We'll call for another <laughs> hearing, obviously, so that a lot of you can also give your inputs. But uh, perhaps it's also important to note uh, dun sa social welfare attaches natin but if they can also help in monitoring. Yes, no? ma'am. Yes, Kasi uh, kanina it was uh, mentioned and uh, uh, extensively yung uh, lack of monitoring and uh, Importante ho talaga yun. Uh, bago lang tayo magwakas, dahil may, may hearing pa ho tayo sa susunod. Uh, if you want, kung ako lang ho masusunod, pwede ako dito hanggang alas 12 ng madaling araw at mag-hearing mag tayo. But uh, I'm getting a lot of uh, signals, not only from the Senate President, but also I was told that the family of Janeline is here and they wanted to see me. Uh, gusto ko lang balikan yung kanina dun sa blood money and uh, it was denied by DFA. Baka meron din kayong tao na na naglalakad nitong uh, blood money just just please uh, double check lang no uh, we make sure na na wala ito and, and napaka insensitive kung totoo yung uh, mga nabalitaan natin uh, during the uh, the 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 mass uh, bago ihatid sa huling uh, hantungan itong si uh, Jenny eh. 
may mga ganitong pagkilos, especially coming from the government uh, agencies. So, uh, I hope we'll be more sensitive to these uh, issues. Pasensya na ho, wala ho tayong time. Again, as I mentioned, this is a heavy day for all of us, for our country, and uh, as we reflect on the events that lead us to this inquiry, we can't help but think and feel that this is something about our national self-esteem, our national self-worth, and self-perception. Uh, corollary to that, this issue is also a matter on how others perceive us as a nation and as a people. So before we end, I'd like to highlight some very important points that uh, can help us find solutions um, to these problems uh, we are facing today and restore self-esteem of the Filipino people as a whole and as a nation. Una yung uh, nabanggit ni uh, Sec Bellio na kung di natin mapagkakatiwalaan ng isang host country, eh, magdalawang isip tayo. Gawin natin lahat ng magagawa natin to protect our, uh, our uh, workers. Uh, Doon sa kanyang uh, gut feel, parang mayroong cover-up. So, buti na lang nagkaroon ng re-autopsy. At ngayong may re-autopsy, um, um, may, may klaro tayong idea sa kinahinatnan ni uh, Jeneline at magagamit natin ito sa uh, uh, pagtugis uh, dito sa mga salarin. Um, the murder charges were, were, were filed against the couple and uh, we will continue to monitor itong uh, mga developments na ito. Now, yung issue naman ng uh, pagpapabaya ng uh, recruitment agency na nagpaalis kay Jeneline, um, siya, uh, si uh, Mr. Madamba, narinig natin kanina, yung mga binanggit po niya e eh, totally different dun sa mga narinig naman nating reports from POEA, from DFA, from OY, etc. Um, importante po talaga yung uh, pag-aalaga at malasakit para sa ating mga kababayan. Yung uh, monitoring, uh, there's so much room for improvement. When you talk about monitoring systems of our uh, government agencies, especially POEA, tama po nakansalahin ninyo yung permit ng, uh, o magpataw ng suspension sa isang recruitment agency pero hindi hindi rin hindi ba dapat uh, mas proactive din po tayo na at uh, matagal na nating alam na may mga pang-abuso dito sa ating mga Filipino domestic uh, workers in Kuwait. Hindi po dapat ikabahala kung uh, magtuloy-tuloy. Tingin ko po yung uh, employment ban dahil uh, maliit lang din yung nakukuha ng mga HSWs natin kumpara sa nakaambang panganib sa kanila sa pagtatrabaho. Kanina pinakita natin yung figures yung mga welfare uh, cases na kinakaharap ng ating mga OFWs, lalong-lalo na po sa bansang Kuwait at lalong-lalo na sa mga bansang nagpapatupad nitong uh, kafala system. We'll study this, we will study this matter and look at uh, how other countries also, like Indonesia, impose a moratorium on, uh, on um, uh, uh, banning their, uh, some of their workers in the Middle East, uh, especially their uh, household service workers. We also acknowledge that uh, Differentiation of rules is also called for and uh, ultimately to further strengthen our laws on migration, especially the Migrant uh, Workers Act. Um, I know this is uh, not part of our uh, uh, discussion today, but uh, let me uh, remind yung dole. Kasi ho, uh, for example, yung uh, security of tenure na, na hinihintay ko po uh, from, from, from dole side na... na, 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 na na-consult na ang ating mga economic managers. Uh, we're, we're waiting for it. Doon po sa issue ng Department of OFWs or uh, 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 paglikha ng isang departamento na tututok sa mga OFWs. Sabi ko nga po, open na open ang ating committee but uh, we had a meeting in Malacanang with, uh, Sap Bongo, with Senator uh, Bongo, with uh, Secretary Bellio. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, after the meeting, uh, we were told that there will be a uh, 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 technical working group that will focus on this and will submit to the Senate the, the version. Uh, let me just put on record that until now, I have not received anything uh, from the technical uh, working group uh, sa mga kababayan natin na, na naghihintay po para matakil natin itong uh, uh, issue na ito. Uh, on uh, uh, Novel coronavirus, just this morning, just wanted to report around 7 a.m., a cruise ship carrying 800 Chinese nationals docked in Manila. As we speak, siguro na kapag uh, disembark na po sila ng barko at namamasyal na dito sa MOA at dito sa Senado, uh, bukas papunta naman daw po ang cruise ship na ito sa Subic. 
as uh, reported po uh, sa, sa mga news uh, outlet. Alam po natin na may uh, sinusunod na quarantine procedures pero ang uh, million dollar question tama po kaya sa pa, napadaungin o pababain pa sila. Uh, sabi nga po, desperate times call for desperate measures. Kaya baka dapat na kanselahin muna ang mga biyahe ng uh, cruise ship na galing uh, sa China. Uh, this representation and Senator Binay filed that resolution that will be tackled on Tuesday uh, regarding uh, this uh, particular issue. Um, DFA said that the DOH has no definite plan yet re with regard to the uh, uh, evacuation of Filipinos in China for obvious reasons, uh, yung coordinations, etc. Pero it's important na maging handa po tayo at alam natin na ang expertise na nasa DOH pero importante talaga na yung inter-agency uh, coordination ay uh, kumikilos at uh, uh, napag-iisipang mabuti yung ating mga tamang hakbang para masiguro ang uh, safety ng ating mga kababayan. We also understand that DFA is uh, just waiting for the go signal ng DOF, DOH and they are uh, ready to repatriate uh, kung uh, payaga na na mag-uwi dito or yung minabanggit kanina ni Senator Amy uh, ginamit, ginawa doon sa <coughs> excuse <coughs> Ebola, Ebola virus. <coughs> May nakamayan ako kanina dun sa labas eh. Um, ibalik ko lang po muli yung issue sa pang-aabuso at uh, pagpatay sa mga Pilipino sa Middle East. Naintindihan po natin na uh, may aspetong uh, cultural yung uh, issue ito, yung uh, kafala, yung tinatawag na parang uh, modern day uh, slavery. May challenge din po sa atin sa pag-equip ng skills ng ating mga kababayan para maipadala natin sila sa mga bansang mas mabibigyan sila ng proteksyon. Uh, importante rin po yung reintegration, nabanggit kanina, and uh, if we can now further improve our programs in uh, reintegrating at uh, yung social protection na napaka-importante para sa ating mga kababayan. Uh, dahil kung tutuusin, hindi po isolated. Uulitin ko po, hindi po isolated na mababa ang tingin sa atin ng mga dayuhang Arabo. Baka mababa rin po ang tingin natin sa ating sarili dahil sa tagal na ng panahon na nangyayari ito, tila parang wala ho tayong magawa at konkretong ginagawa. Kaya tuloy-tuloy napapabayaan ng ating mga kababayan. Lahat po tayo, siguro guilty po dyan, maging ang ating mga uh, mambabatas. Wala po akong sinisingle out. I think we can do more. We can do better. We cannot accept this. We cannot. And we're not a nation of uh, a vast people. Huwag po tayong makontento at masanay sa ganitong kalakaran. Kaya tayo po ay uh, isang bansa na may pagpapahalaga sa buhay, sa karapatang pantao, sa dangal at buhay ng sariling kadugo natin at kalahi sa labas man o sa loob ng sarili nating bayan. Sa inyo pong lahat na narito, maraming salamat and we will continue this hearing next time. Uh, perhaps the executive session, uh, uh, we, we will ask for it, uh, Dr. Rodahe, next time at uh, may, may, may mga nag-request pong senador na uh, wanted to be uh, part of the executive uh, session. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at uh, magandang hapon po. This committee hearing is uh, hereby suspended. Thank you. God bless us all.